Tony La Russa's St. Louis Cardinals have used speed. They've used offense. They've used pitching. They've used defense to beat the Reds and to beat everybody in the Central. They built up a seven-game lead in the Central Division with everyone clicking. But the Reds finally have found a way to beat them. After losing seven of eight, they came back with big hits yesterday and hope for more today against Albert Pujols and the Redbirds next on Fox Sports Net. Live from Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Fox Sports Net presents Cincinnati Reds baseball. Today, it's the Reds against the Redbirds, final of a four-game set. Hi, hello, and welcome to Cincinnati, everybody. Along with the crafty left-hander Chris Welch, I'm George Grant. Well, the Reds finally found a way to win a game against the Cardinals. It, again, took some suspense, but the series has been suspenseful from the beginning. Now, we've said all along, George, that the Reds rely on the three-run home run. They're a monster kind of offense, meaning they hit the home runs, the score runs, and it took that big home run yesterday by Adam Dunn to get it done. That said, it was still a nail-biter. This has been home runs and near home runs that have told the story. Let's go back to game number one. Edgar Renteria, who's hit over 300 against the Reds this year, had big hits. Scott Rowland had big hits, including a big home run shot to left field. Albert Pujols also joined that home run parade. Game number one, they win it 7-2. to Game number two, Chris, it was a heartbreaker that turned into all what looked like a dagger to the Reds' heart. Yeah, we've seen a couple of these games on the year. I think this was even more disheartening than the 9 nothing blowing blown look loss they had in Milwaukee. When you lose it against a team that's ahead of you late in the ball game, a lot of dismal faces in the Reds dugout. And it was capped by this great catch, the greatest catch that any of us have ever seen, and Jim Edmonds said probably his greatest ever, 7-5. to five. The Redbirds win game number two. Then game number three, more suspense late in the ball game, but how about Willie Mopena? Has he been hot or what? Boy, he is a some kind of a powerhouse. This deep into the Reds' bullpen, a uh, big shot by Willie Mopena, tough to keep him in the yard. That man, Albert, said Said, uh uh, we're not finished yet, but Adam Dunn said, yeah, this will finish it. The first home run given up by a left handed, uh, to a left hander by Steve Klein all year long. Adam Dunn got a hang and breaking ball right there and sent all the 36,000 plus here at Great American Ballpark home happy yesterday. Tony LaRusso had a great comment after the game saying, I give credit to Dave Miley because he went right back to Todd Jones, went right back to Danny Graves, and you have to do that. Well, it could be he's got no choice, too, because <laughs> he doesn't have anybody else down there. But those two guys are proven commodities late in the ball game, and you have to continue to go back there. Yeah, everybody's going to have a bad day every once in a while, but you got to go to your horses and expect them out there today again if he's in the same situation. How do you beat this Cardinal team? The Reds did do it yesterday, but this is a team that just has had great success against Cincinnati this year. Talk about Reds killers and how they do it. You look at the list of players, you can make a list that are five or six big, but the two guys at the top of it have to be Renteria and Pujols. Well, there are table setters and then there are those guys that drive them in, and you're seeing one of the table setters, one of the better ones right there in Edgar Renteria. He's 6 for 15, 400 batting average against the Reds, you see right there. And Albert Pujols, Renteria's on, Albert Pujols likely will drive him in. Well, a tip of the cap to the Redbirds who have been able to score some runs, but when you take a look at our G pitching matchup for today, is there a light at the end of the tunnel, Chris? You take one look at who the Reds will put out there, and Jose Acevedo's had well, some success. Well, you're looking for a four-game split right here, so it's a very important ball game for the Reds. Jose Acevedo's coming off a couple of starts in which he hasn't pitched all that great of baseball, but he is capable of throwing a very good baseball game. Jeff Supan, he's a guy that is not an overpowering pitcher. More curveball, more sliders, look cutter here and there. We'll see what what he can do on the road this year however he has been outstanding a 5 and 0 record with a 1.9 Ernie he may be tough to beat here on the road today that is your G pitching matchup still to come we'll be talking to Chris Chambliss we'll be talking more Reds baseball a whole lot to talk about on this free game that and more coming up after these messages Welcome back to Great American Ballpark. As you can see, the crowd continues to file in in preparation for game four of the four game set the Reds against the Redbirds Hi, hello. Welcome back to field level. George Grant along with the hitting instructor of the Reds, Chris Chambliss. And Chris, um, there's been such a, a an interesting dynamic that goes on on any team, but this year especially with this Reds club, we started talking during the winter, not even before you got to spring training, about your mental approach of dealing with each guy individually. And uh, you can see little bits and pieces of that coming to fruition. Well, it's really a great group, and, and I... Uh, 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 if, if there's one thing I didn't realize about this club uh, over the winter is is their chemistry. You know, they, they you know a lot of these guys have been together for a few years now, and uh, uh, they really have a, a great chemistry together. So they work hard together, and uh, it's really been fun working with them. 
chemistry uh, surfaces in a lot of different ways. After maybe one of the most difficult losses of the year, uh, they come back with one of their best wins of the year yesterday. That tells you this team doesn't quit. Well, that's really what I mean by that. You know, that's 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 a sign that a, that a ball club is tight and 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 they're going to try to pick up their teammates. You know, all of the guys want to pick up the relievers, and you know, when when our, when our starters don't don't have a good day, our, our hitters are just dying to pick them up and trying to score enough runs to uh, to help them out and and vice versa. So it's uh, it's a great group, and and you know, when you're that tight and you have that kind of chemistry, you know, that's that's what winning's all about. Because sooner or later, the, the these things are going to happen because you're playing good teams. There's the aggregate of the team and their individual accomplishments and individual the roller coaster ride of hitting and I'm sure uh, the progress of Willie Mulpeña has been something that's made everybody on this team and yourself especially pretty gratified. Yeah, you know Willie, uh, uh, as you know, is, is is tremendous power. I mean, he's got a lot of power and, and he's always had that power, uh, but the, you know his discipline hasn't hasn't been there and so. Uh, the, the the main thing we did with Willie is is his positioning. You know, he's he's been uh, I, I've tried to help him get in a position where he can see the ball better. And and, and uh, aside from that, that Miles has put him in the lineup and give him a chance to play. Uh, those those factors have really helped him a lot. He's seeing the ball better. Uh, he's getting he's getting more confident and and uh, he's able to take some of those uh, those bad pitches in the dirt, which as we know a lot of guys swing at. But uh, he's cut down on that a little bit and it's really helped him. How about uh, you've been through that before? You get hit by a pitch, not once really, twice, and then you come back, hit a home run. That's the best way to answer. Yeah, that, you know, when I played, uh, you know, if somebody uh, hit me or knocked me back or something, the, the thing I want to do is just to hit one right back through the middle and and or hit a home run is even more. So, so and that's what he did. So, you know, that's the way to get back at it, and, that, and that's what the game's all about. Guy uh, hitting off the tee behind is Sean Casey's been something special this year. He's been great. I, I, I. Uh, Another guy that I wasn't aware of his intensity. Uh, I knew he could hit, but but the intensity and and the uh, the drive that he brings to this ball club is is really uh, something that you can't measure. And and uh, he's been an outstanding player. Uh, uh, and he plays first base better than you know as good as anybody I've seen uh, because you think that he's slow and all that, but he has great hands and he just he just plays the game. He's a, a throwback in my in my opinion. You know, you talk about a throwback, and you watch the guy in the other dugout, Albert Pujols uh, and Scott Rowland, both of them throwbacks, and they're the guys that drive the train for this Cardinal offense. Well, you know, that's what that's what playing this game's all about. You know, is, is uh, because w the desire to play the game and and the love of of, of it in the, in the grassroots part of the game is is really what this game's all about. And and you see the the success of the guys who who, who are the better players and. And of course, the talent and, and and the way they go about their business is 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 really what this game's all about. Can the Cardinals be caught in the division? Well, you know, uh, we we feel like we can play with anybody when we're healthy. And, and you know, you know, we don't have Junior now, and and we didn't have Case for a while. Well, when we have all our guys on the field, we can play with anybody. We, and we feel like even when we're losing a guy, we we have a chance. I think they can be caught. They're uh, they're a great team. There's no doubt. And. Uh, uh, let's just hope that uh, they kind of slow down a little bit. You know, they're real hot right now, and uh, we'll try to cool them down a little bit. Thanks, Chris. Always great visiting with you. Best of luck. Thanks, George. Chris Chambler is joining us here. Still to come, Reds baseball against the St. Louis Cardinals. More to come on the pregame show as we prepare for the Reds and the Redbirds next on FSN Ohio. The Lairds wearing red on this Sunday afternoon in Cincinnati. Let's check the Chevrolet starting lineup for Tony LaRusse and the Redbirds, who start the day seven games ahead in the Central Division. This series, the Cardinals, a 3-0-4 team batting average with runners in scoring position. They've been big. That's why they're big in the Central. Marlon Anderson will get the start for Womack at second. Renteria, Pulholtz, Roland Edmonds rolling back in the lineup after getting yesterday off. Reggie Sanders back in right. Mabry will get the start in left. Mike Bathini behind the plate and Jeff Supan. The pitcher bats in the number nine position. That is your Chevrolet starting lineup. And after the All-Star break, uh, not quite the uh, Dimitri Young look, but a little bit of a dyed look for Jose Acevedo, Chris. He found a bucket of Clorox somewhere, Jose Acevedo did, and he's ducked his head right in there, maybe to try to change his luck, because he's not been too lucky lately. He is 
lost four of his last five decisions. Jose Acevedo has, and he's been the victim of a blown save when he did pitch well in one of those last five outings. He's a guy that is not a bad pitcher overall. The Reds hope, though, that he can come out today and be somewhat of a continued trend that the last two starters have done here against the St. Louis Cardinals. Paul Wilson pitched a very good ball game on Friday. Corey Lytle pitched a very good game yesterday as a starter, and they hope that Jose Acevedo is up to the task here today on a Sunday afternoon. When you look at Jose Acevedo's body of work, and if you dissect it, whether it's four, five, or six innings of work, usually they'll give you three or four great innings, and then there's one blip on the radar screen where he'll give up not just one, but sometimes a couple of home runs and a couple of big hits. And that's really an indication that he's got good stuff because in order to get major league hitters out, you've got to have good stuff and be able to use it. But when you have one bad inning or maybe one bad pitch in an inning that means a big three-run home run, that means you lose your focus mentally. And I think that's the biggest thing that Jose Acevedo has to do to kind of take the next step from being in the rotation to being a stalwart in the rotation. And the Reds are hoping that he takes the ball today and sets the pace for this ball game. Which Jose Acevedo will show up which Jeff Supine will show up today those are the questions that Tony La Russa and Dave Miley are looking to get answered this afternoon here are the numbers for Acevedo Chris I'll tell you what he's got some good numbers overall you see he's got 83 strikeouts right there and only 26 bases on ball so he's got pretty good control but sometimes he wavers in that control in the strike zone and that's where he gives up 20 home runs and that's too many home runs for Jose Acevedo but you got to remember he's still a young pitcher from a major league experience standpoint, our Pontiac's got a report. He's got a lot of arm, a hopping fastball. It'll come in 90, 91 miles an hour. Slider is a good, and it's a good strikeout pitch as well. But the hangers, those hanging sliders and those pitches down the middle, they go a long, long way, and they have led to the 20 home runs that he has allowed this year. So Acevedo's ready to go to work. The Reds wearing their red jerseys for this Sunday afternoon at Great American Ballpark. They're looking for a... 500 split of the series after losing the first two they won yesterday if they win today they'll end up the same way they started the series seven and a half back they start today eight and a half back Let's check the four defensive alignment behind Acevedo in right field will be John Vanderwall he'll get his first start he's played the outfield played first and of course a premier pinch hitter this is his first start for the Reds this year after coming off the DL with his knee injury. So Vanderwall is in right. That means William O. Pena will move to center with Ken Griffey Jr., of course, on the disabled list. Adam Dunn back and left. Friel moves from center to third for today. Larkin at the shortstop spot. Right side of the infield per normal. Jimenez and Casey and Jason LaRue behind the plate. That's your Ford defensive alignment. And there's Friel. He's played all over five different positions for the Reds this year. Usually when he plays third, it's been a good sign for Cincinnati. He has been there more often and all the places he's played when the Reds have won baseball games. So he's at third today, guarding against a possible bunt by Marlon Anderson, who will lead it off for Tony La Russa and the Cardinals. Cardinals start the day seven ahead, eight and a half ahead of the Reds in the Central Division. Here's Marlon. He had the big three-run home run, the dagger in the Reds' heart on Friday night. For the season, that was his sixth home run. He's had two pinch-hit home runs, one of them that one on Friday night. One for six in the series, but boy, it was a big one. Anderson in for Womack at second. Friel, edge of the grass down at third. Marlin came up as a Philly, was the starting second baseman for a couple of years in Philadelphia. Last year at Tampa Bay. Finally hooked on with the Cardinals in January. That was before they ever signed Tony Womack. Didn't sign Womack until just before spring training. And Womack has more or less taken over at second, but Chris, I think one of the strengths of this Cardinal team is that they've been able to get such great contributions from guys like Anderson and everybody else who's been alternated in the lineup. Well, I think they spent a lot more money on those extra players than have the Reds, for instance. Marlon Anderson was penciled in to be a starter until the last moment when Tony Womack came aboard. So he's a guy that obviously the Cardinals felt good enough about to put him out there every day. So they really bolster the bench when you have a guy like that coming off the bench. That's a strike, says the home plate umpire, Greg Gibson. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, is down at first. Bruce Dreckman is at second. Larry Poncino, yesterday's home plate umpire, is down at third. On the coaching lines, Jose Aquindo at third. Dave McKay at first. Big swing, fly ball to right. Back is Vanderwall, edge of the warning track. Has it measured, and he'll haul it in one away. Same spot that... 
Marlon Anderson hit it the other day, but this one stayed in the ballpark. Here are our storyline updates for today. The Reds against the Red Birds. Hold on. Reds have blown four run leads each of the last two games. Yesterday, they were able to come back and win it. And stay away from the big inning. Acevedo's bugaboo has been that big inning, not just recently, but throughout his career. And he's trying to guard against that today. One away, and here's Edgar. Renteria, 288. Six homers, 40 knocked in. That's a bullet off the bat of Edgar Renteria. He's got a base hit. He keeps doing what he's been doing. He's hit 316 against the Reds this year, 310 for his career. And here at Great American Ballpark, it's like a home park for him. He's over 350. And Casey's saying, well, What do you eat for breakfast when he gets down to first? I'll tell you what, what does he eat for lunch or what does he eat for dinner? Because it doesn't matter whether it's a day game or a night game, Edgar Renteria seems to lay out some line drives against the Reds. And how about this guy? Albert in at 312, 24 homers, 65 knocked in. This series, oh hum, another near 500 effort, 7 for 15. Against the Reds this year, he's hit 400. And that's right about where he is for his career against Cincinnati, 391. 18 homers against Cincinnati. The most recent was yesterday. Albert's a Big time force, no matter how you cut it. He's become a very good first baseman. That's where he's playing every day now. He hits, hits for power, hits with runners in scoring position. He's the complete package. One strike from Acevedo, short lead for Renteria. Without Womack, the Cardinals don't have the igniter at the top of the order, the automatic guy you might see Tony La Russa steal with, but you can't forget about Renteria. He has stolen 10, been caught four times. And La Russa will always try to dictate the tempo of a ball game. He'll steal when you don't expect him to, and it usually comes either early or late. He'll do some unorthodox things late, but more often than not, they've paid off for the many-time manager of the year. Renteria not going. Sky to right, back is Vanderwall. This will stay in the park too. Pulholtz pumps his right hand as if to say, "I just missed that one," and he still gets it to the warning track. But boy, he came oh so close to drilling this one too. Well, he's dangerous because he uses the entire field, and he's a strong enough batter with strong enough hands and wrists to be able to pop that ball out to right field. He doesn't need a cripple pitch to be able to do that, meaning a hanging breaking ball. He can take a good pitch and hit the other way. Watch pull holds as he leaves the batter's box. He really has no stride and it's kind of an interesting approach to hitting that you see up there. You see more and more hitters do that but most hitters that have no stride are not all that big a home run hitters and he just keeps his weight back and uses that big strong body of his to drive the ball wherever he can. This is a Cardinal team that isn't a showboat team. That's about as much emotion as you see from pull holds. Boo I just missed it. And in fact. Jim Edmonds the other day apologized not that he needed to for the show of emotion after he made that great catch and the Reds in the clubhouse said no need to <laughs> apologize because that's the best catch that any of them have ever seen. That's the a, New York Yankees of the National League. Yeah that's a soft liner to the second baseman Jimenez. They get rolling they get the Redbirds in the first Reds go to work free will lead it off and we return. Chevrolet starting lineup for Dave Miley in the Cincinnati Reds. Ryan Friel in the leadoff spot, but he'll be playing third today. Barry Larkin bat second. Casey in the three hole. Then Dunn, Jimenez, Pena, Vanderwall, and Jason LaRue hits in the eighth spot. Four game hitting streak for the Reds catcher, including two homers. Hey, could have been three if it wasn't for Edmonds and his miraculous catch the other night. That's Jason LaRue hitting in the eighth spot, and Acevedo bats number nine. That is your Chevrolet starting lineup. And here's the veteran right-hander Jeff Supon signed for a million dollars as a free agent in the offseason and he rounds out maybe what is the best starting rotation certainly in the central division although people at the beginning of the year didn't think so Jeff Supon and Morris and Williams and Carpenter and company have really put it up together. Our Pontiac scout report on this right-hander he's a control pitcher not overpowering by any means he's got a curveball he changes speeds on he likes his cutter very much and he's very creative with his pitch selection he'll run the ball in he'll run the ball out and he'll really call his own ball game as opposed to essentially throwing what Mike Matheny puts down there with the signs. Real takes a peek down at third where Roland is in tight edge of the grass. He'll slap this to the right side and his tracks is former red Reggie Sanders he'll haul it in one away Friel kept off the bases and that's the goal of Dave Duncan and 
his pitching staff keep the little guy off the bases. Here's your four defensive alignment for the Reds. Marlon Anderson will get the start for Womack at second. 14 start at second base. Only two errors on the season at second. Full Holtz at first. He's a very, very good first baseman. That's where he plays every day now. Renteria rolling left side of the infield. They own gold gloves. Edmonds, you know, has six of them in center. Mabry and Sanders flank them. And Matheny, a gold glove winner as well behind the plate. That is your Ford Rawlings gold glove defense for the St. Louis Cardinals. And that's the kind of team they are. They really don't have a weakness. And Chris, if you ask the question, can the Cardinals be beaten in the Central? The question really lies within the Cardinals. Uh, if they can escape the injury bug, which they've done through the first half, they have what amounts to the best team in the league right now. Well, they're a little worried about a couple of their players and leg injuries, namely Scott Rowland, the third baseman. He's got an achy knee out there. Albert Pujols, they checked him out yesterday because they thought he may have re-injured his hamstring on a, on a checked swing. So they're not without possibility of some injuries, but certainly they show no weakness right now. If they can play 500 baseball, baseball between here on out, They'll win 91 ball games. So they really put the pressure on the rest of the division to really start playing some great baseball just to catch up. Well, the guy in center puts pressure on everybody. What has he done against the Reds? You name it, he's done it. Adam Dunn didn't do it because of that catch that Edmonds made on him. That was in St. Louis last week, and this was the magic one. He got it over the fence, brought it back, and the look on his face told you everything you needed to know what he thought about that. So Edmonds does it. You know, I think that there's a spot where he dug his cleats in. I think the greatest quote came yesterday, Chris, when, and give him credit. Uh, that's the way Steve Klein is. I mean, he's a free spirit. When Klein gave up the home run to Dunn, here's the delivery to Casey. That's a dribbler to the right side. Klein delivered the home run to Dunn. After the game, he said, where was Edmonds when I needed him? He needed to go about 20 rows deep and right. How come he didn't bring it back? Edmonds didn't have to get that. It's a Acevedo ready to go to work against the Redbirds as we go to the top of two. Jim Edmonds will lead it off. Edmonds eight for 14 and two homers against Acevedo in his career. Edmonds is one of those streaky hitters and even though the Reds had a lead in the ninth yesterday you always feel a little uneasy. You know, you'd have to say after having a five game five home run streak snapped earlier in the series he's one step away from starting another streak he's had four six game hitting streaks this year one ball to Edmonds Gibson says uh uh and that's two balls and no strikes those are the scary numbers for Jim against Jose Just misses. So for the second straight inning, Acevedo starts off three balls, no strikes to the leadoff hitter, and takes a deep look towards home plate and the home plate umpire, then turns and looks out to the outfield. He's an extra base machine, isn't he? Three and zero. Oh. And there's ball four. The leadoff walk to Edmonds. Earlier in his career, he would run more often. He's stolen twice this year, been caught two times, and here comes Reggie Sanders. Sanders, 257, 14 homers, 45 knocked in. In the series, he's two for seven. As he faces Acevedo. Russo gave Sanders yesterday off and told him he'd be playing today. He agonized over his starting lineup for today. He wanted to play Ray Langford, who came up with a big pinch hit yesterday. But at the same time, he had John Mabry, who he had penciled into the lineup yesterday and yanked him from the lineup just before the ball game. So Mabry's in there and he's in the on deck circle. Sanders is in there too, and Roland's back at third. So three new looks along with Anderson in this lineup for the Cardinals today. One ball one strike. Sanders takes a look down at Jose Akindo rolls through some signs. Wearing a 
Redbird uniform now. His first uni was a red uniform, of course. Seven different teams for Reggie. And he's gotten better as he's aged. Kind of like vintage wine, Chris. He's come up with some big hits the last three or four years. You know, he's begun to really shrink that hole that pitchers used to exploit up and into him, not swinging at it as much and making more contact. Still, the book on Reggie Sanders is that you want to pitch fastballs in underneath his hands and elbows, and then, of course, breaking balls away. In this sequence, Acevedo went breaking ball, fastball, and breaking ball again. So if he stays with that same trend, you got to figure Reggie's looking for a fastball. Acevedo may come up with it. Two and one. Short lead Edmonds. Runner not going. And that's a strike in there. A little slider that backed up on the inside corner. Well, Reggie, as a pirate, last year, he came in, got three hits in his first game here at a two home run ball game as a St. Louis Cardinal the Reds have handled him pretty good this year he's hit only 190 against the Reds this year but those numbers for his two year career at great American have been great he throws him with the fastball there that's a strikeout number one for Acevedo and here comes John Mabry Anna Kornikova, you know about her looks. That made her a superstar off the court. Made her one of the world's best-known tennis players, too. But struggles in tournaments and injuries have led to disappointment on the court. Anna Kornikova, beyond the glory, tonight on Fox Sports Net Ohio. Here's Mabry, 272, five homers, and 20 knocked in on the year. That slapped out of play to the left side. Kind of an overcast day right now. There is a chance of a thunderstorm or two rolling through. And the Reds are keeping their fingers crossed to get this win in today. Cardinals and Reds finish their four game series today, then play again in a, another week or so, Chris. It's been like constant Cardinal baseball 13 times in five and a half weeks. That's how many times these two teams will have played against each other after the end of the month. That's a fair ball past Casey down the line. Long run for Vanderwall. Edmonds rounds third will hold there. And it's a double for Mabry. So John Mabry gets a two base hit, sneaks it past Casey, and it's second and third with one out. Well, John Mabry had a pretty good swing on the first pitch that he saw, but was a little bit late on it. It looks like he made the adjustment on this one and gets it right down the baseline. I mean, that was smack right over the first base bag. And Sean Casey was holding the runner on, you know, as a first baseman, you take a couple of hopscotch steps off the bag, and then to have to come back like that to make the, the catch, you, you get your momentum going one way, and that ball takes you the other way, just not able to get his glove down in time. Perfect spot for Mabry, bad spot for the Reds, second and third one out, and here's Matheny. Talk about all the big hitters for the Cardinals. This guy has hit better than anybody for average against the Reds this year. He's in at 409 against the Reds. 260 overall. Short compact swing. No, he's not going to hit the long ball, but he'll shorten that swing up. And what he's looking for here is a base hit to produce two runs. Well, he had a couple of hits yesterday, and he's also a guy that whatever he does at the plate is almost icing on the cake. He is so good behind the plate, the way he blocks the ball, handles pitching, throws runners out. Best defensive catcher in the league. Correctly spared an error by official scorer Ron Roth. Yesterday, so those of you that didn't see the highlights, no one covered second on a Friel stolen base. He threw the ball into center field, and and correctly so. Glenn Sample, Ron Roth huddled, and as we've seen before, they called down to the dugout and found out who was supposed to cover, and they charged the error to Womack. They got it right. That's the important thing, huh? They usually do. One ball, one strike. Loop to the right side. Casey back. And it'll get a run in. And Acevedo has got a ticket and he's a spectator. I think he thought Casey was going to get it. He was slow to get to it. Acevedo 
looked. All he could do is turn, look at the ball, and look at home plate. Casey slowed up because he thought for sure the second baseman would get it. Jimenez doesn't. It winds up being a base hit and a run score. It looked like at first that maybe Sean Casey took a step in before he realized that ball was going to carry over his head. Just a little sand iron right there that Mike Matheny is able to produce a run with. So you don't have to necessarily hit the ball hard to get an RBI, and he does it right there. Just a little blooper that goes right over the head of the first baseman. Had Acevedo read that at all and been to first base he still would have been able to beat Matheny to first and maybe get at least one out and would have scored a run but you've been looking at two outs right here first and third bunt they'll take the out at first a successful sacrifice by Supine so now it's second and third with two outs it looked as if Jimenez thought Casey was going to get it and then Casey at the last minute thought Jimenez was going to get it either way it's a ball that with that kind of hang time somebody should have got it. Yeah, and it's easy for a pitcher to give up on balls like that. Everybody who's pitched has done that before, but after a while, you have to get in the habit of everything that's hit to the right side. You've got to start moving over there. At the very worst, you don't have a play. At the very best, you make something out of nothing. Here's Anderson up for the second time in two innings. He hit a fly ball to right first time up. Second and third, two away. Check swing. Can LaRue get there? He does. But the blue base hit results in a run. One nothing Cardinals lead it to the bottom of two. Dunn will lead it off. As former Pittsburgh Pirate broadcaster Bob Prince would say this has been a series of bloops and blasts. Dunn had the blast yesterday the three run home run that gave the Reds a comeback victory and here is a big bang Chris it came off Steve Klein went into the right field seats and result a three run shot and the Reds had a victory the final score seven to five that broke up a four all tie in the bottom of eight Cardinals came back to get a run in the ninth but the Reds still won it. You know the improbability of that home run was really what made it so dramatic. Obviously they needed a home run the Reds right there in order to kind of ice the ball game against the Cardinals and it really wasn't ice anyway because the Cardinals still put a couple of runners on base in the next inning. But the fact that he hit it off of one of the toughest left handers in the league and Steve Klein who has not given up a home run to a lefty all year long. In fact he'd only given up one home run total all year long. That's the way to break out of a little mini slump. Klein and King give the Cardinals the best lefty duo in all of baseball in 2004. And they're ready to come back day after day. So it's not like they use you use them one day and you won't see them again the next. That's ball four away for Dunn. Adam takes the free pass and here comes D'Angelo. Hey the Reds and Bigs present the Bigs kids run on at Great American Ballpark before each Saturday and Sunday Reds home game. Bigs managers reward area youth for their success in leadership education and citizenship. Look for these top students on the field at the next weekend home game. Thanks to Biggs and your Cincinnati Reds. First walk by Supan. And here's D'Angelo. D'Angelo could have been the GOAT yesterday. He slowed up on a base hit, a hit that he should have scored on, and was easily thrown out at the plate. And as it turned out, Dunn bailed him and the rest of the Reds out with the big home run. There's two pretty good offensive players, two bright young stars down at first. Bull Holtz and Dunn. Big time power. And they carry the hopes of their two organizations. One thing you start to wonder though, Chris, in this series, you look at Albert Pujols, and he's had a great defensive series too, for the most part. He's starting to wear that wrap around the right elbow. Remember, he had trouble with the elbow nursed himself through it last year and it's something that the Cardinals will look very closely at and I'm sure he will too. Well, that's one reason why the Cardinals would just love to continue the kind of torrid pace that they're on. They're eight and two in the last ten ball games. They've even been better than that over the last 15 or so and kind of ice the division early and if they can do that then they can start giving more frequent rest to those players that they're worried about Albert Pujols is one Scott Rowland is another you like to give Renteria a few days off from time to time. And the way that they're playing it doesn't look like anybody's going to get in their way. Pujols tweaked his hamstring 
few weeks ago played through that tweaked it again yesterday he's in the lineup again today. Angelo trying to keep that hitting streak alive. 385 during that streak. That's blooped the other way. Dunn will hold the first. If you missed it before the game today, didn't get a chance to see real Reds. The Reds did make a roster move today. As Dunn leads off first. Fly ball to left. Mabry under it. Dunn will go halfway. Mabry's got it, and there's one away. Jesus Sanchez on his way, the Reds hope, back to Louisville, designated for assignment today. And the Reds did call up Jason Romano prior to the ball game. The infielder, outfielder, was with the Reds earlier this year. Well, you know, the Reds need somebody to put in there as a defensive replacement late in the ball game. If John Vanderwall is going to get a few starts in right field, he's not the guy with his reconstructed knee to chase down a fly ball with the game on the line. So Romano is a very good defensive outfielder. Same for Jacob Cruz. He can play some outfield, but you don't put him in for defense at the end of the game. So if Willie Mopane is in the ball game playing and Ryan Friel's at third base, you have to have an outfielder to be able to go in there and put some do some glove work. And that's I think the reason why they brought Jason Romano up. Brandon Clawson is on his way up. He will pitch for the Reds this week at Triple A. He will start on Tuesday. 18 games and most importantly last seven starts last month plus he's pitched well five and two. So the question for the Reds will be on Tuesday they'll have to make another move and the question will be surrounding probably that's down a little low to Willie Mopena a lot that might have to do with the health of Reds third baseman Brandon Larson uh, his hamstring left hamstring tweaked yesterday and they'll monitor for the next couple of days if he's healthy he'll stay if not he'll be back on the disabled you know there's really no question there shouldn't be anyway why Brandon Larson look out Willie Mo why he hasn't been able to put together a solid effort at third base because he's not been able to put together a solid amount of time we're playing time that's just a little fastball that just comes in off Willie Mo no intent I'm sure meant by Jeff Sapon. You got to stay healthy to be able to play and you have to play in order to get a little streak going together. So sporadic playing time usually leads to sporadic performance and that's what we've seen out of Brandon Lars uh, Larson. 2 1 to Pena. That's on the corner breaking ball for a strike. You know it's going to be tough when I get Brandon Clausen up here. We have Brandon Larson Brandon Clausen. I'm going to let you take care of that. Is this BL BC. <laughs> Uh, yesterday Willie Moe of course came back after being hit twice by pitches and drilled a home run. There it is two balls two strikes. Breaking ball the runner going done will be in there. He stole that one on the pitcher. He had a four step break before the pitch was ever delivered. Stolen base for Dunn is fourth of the year. Well, he took a good pitch to go on. It was a 2-2 pitch and a breaking ball. And you see he was already moving a little bit towards second base when Jeff Sapon decided to go to the plate. Give a big guy a little head start like that. And he swipes his fourth of the season, even with a good throw by Mike Matheny. The runner in scoring position for Willie Moe. Swing and a miss. He got him. Tough matchup today for Willie Moe. He may get a mistake pitch or two from Jeff Sapon, but Sapon is a pitcher's pitcher. He's the guy that changes speeds on his breaking ball. He doesn't really challenge those guys who are good fastball hitters with fastballs, knowing that his stuff isn't good enough just to get guys out. A little breaking ball right there, pulled the string on it. He wants those hitters out ahead of themselves. And I think Willie Moe's a guy who's still learning the craft of hitting is more susceptible to a pitcher like that than he is just a guy that kind of rears back and tries to fog it by him. Boston Kansas City Pittsburgh all stops for Jeff for this Oklahoma City Oklahoma native and he's learned how to pitch along the road that is a little inside to Vanderwall that's a little cutter right there that we talked about in our Pontiac scatter report he really likes to throw that pitch to left handers he crowds him in off the play a little bit keeps him from getting the barrel of the bat on the ball that's a good pitch to lay off of. Ball delivery to the Reds right fielder for today, John Vanderwall. Done off second.
Hit pretty good. Does he have enough? If it stays fair, it will be gone. Vanderwall gets the start. Number 25 delivers. The Reds have a lead two to one. for the Reds right there for that man John Vanderwall comes in and gets his first home run as a Red a 368 career batting average against Jeff Sapon and that's why Dave Molly put him in the lineup today had some success against him and he takes him deep right there that's the second home run that he has hit off this St. Louis right hander and for Supine that's the 14th home run he's allowed this year so Vanderwall puts the hammer on it the Reds lead it two to one and here comes LaRue. Jason in at 229, nine homers of his own, and 30 knocked in. High in the air to the right side. Sanders under it. That'll close out the Reds, but a two out bolt from John Vanderwall has given the Reds a lead. A little choke up, a little swing, big result. Reds lead it 2 1. Cast is presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Rico home run replay. Vanderwall's first of this year, first since last August, and he snuck it in right at the pole. Point. Give him a chance. He's taking advantage of it, Chris. You know what? Exactly right. That's what the Reds signed him for is to be a big bat off the bench and occasional starter. That's what you do when you have a, a, a pinch hitter like that. You give him an occasional start here and there. And with the Reds now depleted in the outfield department, you're going to see him play a little bit more and more. And if he continues to hit like that, you're going to play him, play him a whole bunch. Here's Edgar Renteria leads it off as we go to the top of three. Edgar single to left first time up. That's a little high. One ball and one strike. Good folks from Domino's have come up with another great special for Reds fans called Domino's Now. Ask for the new 555 deal. You can enjoy three medium one topping pizzas for as little as five bucks each from Domino's. A little low, two and one. Cardinals move from here to Chicago to play the Cubs Monday and Tuesday big showdown for them Renteria all done will do is turn around and look because that's going to be gone Edgar hits his seventh home run of the year his tenth against the Reds in his career and Acevedo gets bitten by the home run bug. Well, the two base hits that Renteria has had today a leadoff a single for him in the first inning and that home run both fastballs essentially right down Broadway. This is what we've talked about with Jose Acevedo just even though he misses the bat with a lot of his pitches he makes mistakes in the strike zone and this one right there for Edgar Renteria a couple of inches above the waist middle in good hitting speed. See you later. He wanted it in but down and in not up and in and Renteria makes him pay. Adam Dunn just turned around and did a pirouette knowing that I'll just sit and watch it. Nothing you know you can do. You, you get a guy like Edgar Renteria who, who's hitting the ball really well against you and the rest of the ball club and you want a fastball inside. If you miss you want to miss inside and if you hit the guy then so be it. But you can't miss out over the plate. Uh, and you can't be nice about it. You have to kind of claim a part of that home plate and sometimes throw in a two seamer in the elbows. And if you miss, miss four inches inside instead of four, miss four inches out over the dish. Breaking ball by Acevedo misses. 
One ball and two strikes. That guy's in one of those streaks too that you make a mistake he's going to make you pay. Well you know that's why the, you have to recognize that and, and make sure you don't make mistakes. I mean you're always on the on the edge when you face Scott Rowland and Albert Pujols because they never miss mistakes. Barry Bonds never miss, misses mistakes. But you know when you have a guy like Edgar Renteria who is not a career 320 hitter he's a guy that you can get out. He's on a roll right now because you're throwing him too many hittable pitches. 2-2 two -two to Pujols. Breaking ball dribble foul. Now the Cardinals facing the Reds here then the Cubs next for the Cubs who start the day seven games back. They know the importance of their two games with St. Louis. The Reds of course will be playing Milwaukee night game tomorrow night. Be on the air with that one with real Reds at 630. And it looks like it'll be Hendrickson will be called up for Milwaukee the youngster we talked about last week coming up from Triple A. They haven't officially made that indication yet but it appears that way. Well Acevedo wanted that pitch after throwing a very excellent breaking ball on the previous pitch. Pujols barely fouled it off. He duplicated that spot or nearly so and not in the opinion of the home plate umpire Greg Gibson because that one misses but not by much. Well count three two. That's high ball four. Hey, get ready for the next great thing in sports entertainment as Max Kellerman comes to Fox Sports Net Ohio. Max won't pull any punches. He goes toe to toe with the biggest names in sports five nights a week. I Max weeknights right here at six and ten. And Larue goes out to chat a bit with Acevedo. That's two batters now that he's questioned calls by the home plate umpire and it's been frequent in this series and the end result has not been good for Reds pitchers who have let it get under their skin. Now that's the way the catcher has to be part psychologist out there or psychiatrist go out there and try to settle the guy down a little bit. Let him go back to being relaxed go back to being aggressive and having confidence in being able to get hitters out by throwing good stuff not trying to make perfect pitches. Here's Roland soft liner to second first time up. Pool holds off first. That's a bouncer through into center. Rolling as a base hit. Two on. No one out still in the third and a run already in. And here comes Edmonds. You know, one of the philosophies that Don Gullen has tried to impart on all of his pitchers and catchers ever since he's taken over as the Reds pitching coach, what, 12 years ago, is to be able to use the fastball number one and pitch inside with it. But we haven't seen really today Acevedo, who's got a pretty good fastball, go inside and try to open up the outer part of the plate by establishing himself with an inside fastball. When he did, he gave up a home run to Renteria because he missed and looks like he's a little bit shy about going back in there. We've seen Willie Moe hit twice. Willie Moe spun today with an inside fastball. And the Reds haven't spun one, one Cardinal hitter in this four game series. It's been pretty clear. Dave Duncan's philosophy has always been on the inside part of the plate. The Cardinals have always believed in that. And they use it to their advantage. Here's Edmonds who walked in the second. Homer a walk and a base hit. Takes a little off out in front is Edmonds. Miles away from ordinary stat on Jim Edmonds. He's won four straight gold gloves. The National League record for outfielders is 12. That's by the Say Hey Kid in the 50s to the 60s and Roberto Clemente. Six gold gloves overall for Jim Edmonds. Two and one ahead in the count is the Cardinal center fielder as Acevedo comes to the stretch. That's the spot. Two and two. 
There, there's a pitch coming inside to Jim Edmonds right there. That's a nice two seam fastball that Acevedo can throw. The kind that some right handers can throw consistently. Comes inside, looks like it's going to get you right and around the thigh, and then zips right back in and catches the inside part of the plate. Uh oh. On a line to right, back is Vanderwall. It's off the wall. Full hole to around third. He'll score. They're going to hold a roll in at third. And Edmonds will have a two base hit. He didn't get all of this. And thankfully for Acevedo, it's not a three run homer. Came very close to being just that. It had top spin on it. Sinking hits the wall and it's now 3 2 St. Louis. Well, he got a whole bunch of it. It's down and in, and Edmonds, even though he's got that widespread out stance, still has that wheelhouse down and in like most, most lefties do. And the only reason it stays in the ballpark is because it does have that top spin. A little humpback line drive right there. If he misses that a little bit more, that ball goes way up into the bleachers. He was all over it. So after throwing a, a nice. Two ball, one strike fastball that kind of move Edmonds off the plate. He comes right back with a hanging breaking ball right in the wheelhouse. And that's what we talk about with Jose. And this is, I guess, the learning process of a young pitcher. Well, it's out to calm him down a bit, try to get him straight before the wheels come off here. Cardinals have scored two. And with Reggie Sanders and Mabry coming to the plate, Dave Miley has dispatched his pitching coach to try to cut down on any damage and he'll get somebody up in the bullpen looks like Todd Van Poppel is up and tossing Red split the series if they win today and they'd end up being right where they were when the series started seven and a half back they lose they're nine and a half back with the Cardinals leaving town Red start the day two and a half back in the wild card chase. Here's Sanders struck out looking in the second already 44 pitches for Acevedo were in the third inning. Breaking ball misses two and oh. Edmonds lead off. And that one just misses. Three balls, no strikes to Reggie Sanders. With Mabry, who double last time on deck. And they'll put him on and face Mabry. So the bases are loaded. No one out in the third. In an inning where Renteria led off with a homer to tie it. Pulholtz walk, Roland single, Edmonds double makes it 3 2, and here's Mabry. No place for Miley to put him. And they're going to play the infield back to try to get a double play the conventional way. If the ball is hit back to Acevedo or maybe to third base, you're going to see a play at the plate, but everybody else is going to get a, a run in. Creels even with the bag. He could go either way depending on where the ball goes. Mabry skies it to center. Willie Moe under it. Tagging at third is rolling. Pena's throw will go to third. And look out, it's over everybody's head, but Acevedo's there to back up. The run will score. Sacrifice fly from Mabry. And fortunately, Acevedo did what he was supposed to do. He was there to get the throw by Willie Moe. It wasn't even close. It was launched 20 feet over the head of Friel. You know, usually on a play like that, you're backing up because of a bad hop, not because somebody's going to airmail it. And Willie Moe, he's got a good arm. No harm done. Willie Moe kicked at the dirt after he made the throw. Fortunately, Acevedo's there. So it's second and first and second now 
Still the double play is in order after the fly ball double play can get him out of the inning and Matheny ground ball hitter very susceptible to it. So Acevedo try to coax one. Yeah you're trying to get a ground ball but if you saw that the pitch that he threw to John Mabry that ball is up around the letters this first pitch that he throws to Mike Matheny also way up around the letters. So you got to tell yourself as a pitcher I'm really going to concentrate right here. I need a ground ball to get out of the inning. I'm going to throw it down around the knees and if I miss down the dirt so be it but I've got to get it down to do it. It's a little more like it. Ball and a strike. Larkin Jimenez double play depth and Casey playing well off the bag with the right hand batter at the plate. That's in the air to right center field. No one's going to get there and that'll chase one run home. They're going to send the runner from second. Here's the throw to the plate and he'll score. Sanders campers home too. So Matheny makes Acevedo pay. That's a two base hit. Two more runs scored at 6 2 St. Louis. Matheny's two hits today, over 400 against the Reds this year. Now the Reynoldsburg, Ohio native makes him pay right there. And we talked about big innings for Jose Acevedo, and it might be that this five run inning is going to be all that we see. Time for our call to the bullpen. Acevedo's night and day done as the Reds trail it six to two. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Skyline Chili, the official chili of the Cincinnati Reds. Reliant update. Uh uh. We talked about it early. Avoid the big inning. Acevedo's last start, five runs in the first. Here, five runs in the first third of the third inning have spelled doom for him. 6 2 St. Louis, and here's Todd Van Poppel, Chris. Well, you're inconsolable when that happens. You see Brandon Larson going by and kind of patting Acevedo on the shoulder. And you look up and you wonder what happened. It seems like everything you threw was very hittable, and hopefully that's not the way for the Reds reliever Todd Van Poppel coming in here. He was in the starting rotation for a while, Van Poppel was, and now finds himself back into the bullpen to be the long man. Hopefully you don't get used too much as the long man or the swing man, meaning the guy that gets penciled in in that fifth spot from time to time but the Reds have this some decision making to do obviously with their long range look at their starting rotation. Here's Supan who successfully sacrificed first time up and Popple's job stop the bleeding get out of the inning and just keep it where it is for a couple of innings and give the Reds a chance to get back in it. I mean, if you have a pitcher who has been consistently inconsistent and if he's got options left and you think you're in a pennant race or at least in the wild card race uh, how well, how long can you go with it. The story of Jose Acevedo is sometimes one step forward two steps back two steps forward one step back that's the story of young pitching. And that pitching staff will get younger this week with. The ascension of Brandon Clawson to the major league roster and he'll pitch on Tuesday against Milwaukee. So Supan's been given a pretty good gift here in the third five runs in he leads it now six to two. Now we saw yesterday with Jason Marquis the maybe the best hitting pitcher in the National League and would Jeff Supan be the worst hitting pitcher in the National League. Oh for twenty eight. He's hitting bad luck against tough pitches. That's a hard zero <laughs> zero zero. Is you're that right. you're telling me? You're right. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Second out of the inning, first strikeout. And here's the ninth batter of the inning to come to the plate. It's Marlon Anderson, the leadoff hitter. It's a nice guy to face, though, if you're Todd Van Poppel coming in out of the bullpen, even if you didn't get enough warm up pitches, because it happened very quickly here in the third inning to Acevedo. At least you're going in there facing a the guy that hasn't had a hit yet this year and maybe give you a few extra pitches to warm up with. Go back and warm up a little more with him. Here's Marlin. 0 for 2. About the last thing that Dave Miley wanted was a first three innings like this. I mean, the Reds were about as low as they could be back in about 36 hours ago when they lost the game Friday night. Fell. 
after losing the first two games of the series. But this club, how many times have we seen it, Chris? They keep coming back. They were down again yesterday in the eighth when the Cardinals rallied to come up with a bottom of the eighth rally and win a game. And they're looking to continue that momentum today. But uh uh, so far. You know, I kind of off the cuff called the St. Louis Cardinals the New York Yankees of the National League because they don't flaunt their plays or they don't rub it in. But they're also kind of remind me of the New York Yankees of the National League because they finish a ball game out and they're professionals and they just keep coming back and keep coming back and they never ever play dead and I think that's you know in talking to Tony LaRusso over the last few days George he's a guy that it's the pressure on him now is to keep his team focused and he certainly has got a veteran ball club that is not going to be denied at least they don't appear to be this year They've come together a lot. Swing and a miss. Anderson's retired. Van Poppel gets two in a row, but not before. Cardinals come up with five in the third. Lead it six to two to the bottom of three. Here we go back at Great American Ballpark. Todd Van Poppel will hit in the ninth spot after he came in for Acevedo to lead it off. Bottom of three. Friel and Larkin will follow. This one took a left hand turn for the Cardinals. They lead it six to two. Bottom of inning number three. Fine has had an up and down first half, as has Acevedo. So far today, he's in control. He did allow a home run to Vanderwall, two run shot in the second. Now you talk about the pressure of getting a lead, and I, I remember talking to Sparky Anderson and asking him once, "What was the greatest pressure?" that you ever felt was it during 75 76 there's a bouncer down to second Marlon Anderson has it one away hey here's the summer takeoff upcoming schedule brought to you by Amerisuites and Wellesley Inns and Suites uh, summer takeoff details and how you can stay at any Amerisuites or Wellesley Inns and Suites and receive $100 off any airline ticket anytime visit summer takeoff dot com Reds Host Milwaukee here, then two in Chicago, then on to Pittsburgh for two games next weekend. Dan Hort will be joining you next weekend in Pittsburgh. I'll be at Cooperstown for the Hall of Fame ceremonies. And Chris, back to Sparky. Uh, I often wondered, you know, what was the most pressure that he felt? You know, was it the Big Red Machine era or was it the postseason? He said very clearly, the worst pressure he ever felt was in Detroit 20 years ago when he started 35 and five. And the only thing he was thinking, here we are 40 games into the season. I got 122 left. If I blow this thing, <laughs> what kind of a manager am I? And and that's the same kind of situation Tony La is in now. He's got a seven game lead here at the end of July heading into August. And you just understand that there's a pressure to keep that lead, not to blow that lead. And it's an everyday pressure. Yeah, and I think that really falls more on the manager than it does the players mm -hmm. because yep. he's got, of course, the players right here that everybody in the world is going to say they've got no weaknesses. Look how strong they are. They've got veterans. They've got a big payroll. Walt Jockety has given Tony La Russa every weapon with which he could ever ask, including maybe one of the better bullpens in the league, certainly one of the best one-two punches in left-handed relief. So how could this team ever blow it? Well, if they do, it's going to be the fall of the manager, and that's probably what he goes to bed with every night, and he's a guy that's kind of a little bit worrisome about that in the first place. Friel bounces it to the right side. He's hustling. Here's the throw, and Anderson will get him. Nice play, Marlon Anderson, two away, and here comes Larkin. I mean, all you have to do is watch Tony LaRusso during a game. I mean, he looks like a expectant dad in the waiting room at the hospital. He'll march back and forth from one side of the dugout to the other. And this is a guy with a seven game lead who's been there before. One. Titles with the White Sox and with the A's, of course. Been to the postseason with the Cardinals. Never won a World Series title with the Cardinals. And look, look at him. I mean, he not, <laughs> is he comfortable? He's got a seven-game lead and a 6-2 lead in the ballgame. He's never comfortable. Here's Larkin. And you really have to say, and you know, we talk often about you know, managers in the Hall of Fame. I think mean, we, we both believe that Joe Torre will get in there. He came close to making be in the Hall of Famer as a player, but what he's done with the Yankees, he's certainly going to the Hall of Fame. You figure Bobby Cox is going to the Hall of Fame. And you figure LaRusse is too. You know, sometimes it's as difficult for a manager who is given a very good ball club 
to try to keep him in first place and it is a, an underachieving team or a, a team that's not expected to do well like the Cincinnati Reds or Milwaukee Brewers this year everybody wants to get to jump all over those those teams and, and give Ned Yost or Dave Miley the manager of the year but what about that that manager that is expected to win and does win I mean he deserves a little credit too. Bobby Cox year in and year out has to be under consideration for manager of the year because even though they've had a great run of it down in Atlanta and they've got great players he still is able to keep those guys on the edge all year long and the same for La Russa. no one expected him to do that this year they expected the Cubs the Houston Astros and and I'm one of those who did too. I expected the Cubs and the Astros to finish ahead of the St. Louis Cardinals, but you said all along, don't discount Tony La Russa and what he can do for that Cardinal ball club. Probably more than anything, here's the 2 2 to Larkin. The one year that sticks in his craw more than anything would be 1990. I mean, the A's, his A's were favored over the Reds. Mm -hmm. Everybody was saying that it was going to be the A's who would sweep everybody, and the Reds swept Oakland. And looking at him in that clubhouse, I mean, the elation of Lou Pinella. In his office, then going to Larusa's office and watching Lansford and McGuire and those guys. I mean, they thought they were going to win, and here it was. They got blitzed by the Reds. And if you look back, I mean, getting blindsided. Once that's happened to you once, you never forget that feeling, whether it's a regular season, postseason, or whatever. So is that why his standard answer is when you ask him every day, <laughs> and you ask him too, Tony, how you doing? And what does he tell you? Uh, ask me at 10:30 tonight. Right. <laughs> When the game is over, then we'll know. And that's really that's what he has to do. That's what anybody has to do with the club. Win today. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about tomorrow, the next day. Win today. Two two to Larkin, swing and a miss. Supine gets the Reds one two three in inning number three. Supine has a lead six to two. We're going to the fourth. As we go, here's Todd Van Poppel back to go to work, and here's Edgar Renteria who started the whole mess for. The Cardinals in the third. Renteria lead off home run in the third, tied the game at two. And before the inning was over for Jose Acevedo, Cardinals had scored five and taken a six to two lead. Now, the other part of LaRusso that really impresses you is his respect for young managers, and Dave Miley being one of them. I mean, he has. Last year he didn't know Dave Miley. He watched him last year at the end of the season when the Reds played the Cardinals, and, and he's made a particular point of telling people within his organization, and certainly even he mentioned it after last night's game that, that he's been impressed by the way Miley runs his club, the fact that the team doesn't quit, the way he runs a game, and managers, you know, it is a fraternity. You begin to get a feel. Does this guy know what he's doing, or is he just kind of picking moves out of a hat? And already, Tony La Russa has gained a lot of respect for that guy right there. He went 1,100 games in the minors. There's a reason for it. Sky to center, Willie Moe is under it. Hey, the Reds got Renteria out for the first time today. He's two for three. New slash. Here's Pulholtz. Time for our Aflac trivia question. Who's the only outfielder in Reds history to win four consecutive gold gloves? The only outfielder in Reds history to win four straight gold gloves. Answer coming up for you. Bull holds to right. Hain you over. Willie Moe says he has it and he does too well. After watching Willie Moe the last few years, Chris, I think, you know, he's gotten more comfortable in right because he's had to play there a lot. But I think if you asked him, and if we've seen him and watched him a lot, his most comfortable spot is out there in center field. Well, that's true. And he certainly has the physical ability to be a center fielder, but still at all, he's been able to, he's not quite a very good outfielder yet. I mean, he's very raw. Uh, we've seen that in right field. He's had a number of misplays and plays that weren't described as errors but certainly open opportunities for advancing runners and so on and Willie Moe's a guy that's just going to have to learn by playing one thing that you can do is work on your hitting in the batting cage and with a hitting instructor before every ball game it's a little more difficult to do that as an outfielder you have to learn situations and the only way you get that is playing and trying to figure it out you know under game pressure. Right. Two and oh that's a strike to Roland. Scott lined to second, single to center. 
This is one of those sports where you have to play to get better. I mean, not just being in the batting cage. You have to play. There goes Willie Moe again, and it is a three for three inning for Pena. Three fly balls to center, and Popple those were to have hit it. We're going to the bottom of four. Casey Dunn, Jimenez due up. Willie Moe's due up four. Sean Casey bounced to first his first time up 0 for 1 leading off bottom of four. That's a bullet to center. There goes Edmonds. Will he get this one? No. It'll hit the track and Casey will have a double. Two bagger number 27 for Sean Casey. Lead off hit for Case and he's in scoring position. You're almost surprised when a ball hits turf when Edmonds out there. Oh, this one hit was hit on a line, and yes, that's about the only way you're going to get one out there that's going to hit grass before it hits leather. Sean Casey's hit the ball hard in this series, and he goes and gets a pretty good pitcher's pitch right there. A nice sinking fastball from Jeff Sapon, and Casey ends up by driving it in over the left center field area and in for a double. You see Casey look at yeah. it, Edmonds. <laughs> Take that. We'll see what he is. The key was trying to keep it in the ballpark. <laughs> Here's Dunn, who didn't keep it in the ballpark in the eighth inning yesterday. A three run homer is 26 of the year. He walked his first time up and stole the base. One strike to the big outfielder for the Reds, Adam Dunn. Blocked by Matheny, and you want to watch a textbook way of doing it, watch that guy right there. I mean, the ball hits the dirt, both knees, cradles it with his body. I mean, you can't do it any better than Matheny does it. Anderson has it. Casey will go to third. They'll get it out, out of the play, though. Productive at bat by Adam Dunn, being able to get that runner over to third. So Casey heads down to third, gives us a chance to give you our Athlon trivia answer for the day. Who's the only outfielder in history to win consecutive Gold Glove awards? You probably got this one. You should. It's our Geronimo, 1974 through 77. Now, last night we were talking about. Gold Gloves, Hall of Fame caliber, who deserves it, who doesn't, and certainly when you talk about Reds and you look at Barry Larkin heading towards retirement, is he a Hall of Famer? And there's a lot of reason to believe that he is, and anybody who's watched the Reds during that era still believes that's a base hit to right by Jimenez. And that'll score Casey. The Reds get one back. It's a 6-3 ball game. And that's really what you have to think of. You're still so low in the ball game right here. You can't expect to drop a five spot on the Cardinals just because they did that to the Reds. You chip away here. You get a couple of base runners there. You all of a sudden tighten the ball game up and make things uncomfortable. Because with the Reds kind of power with some home run hitters in the lineup, you just really never know what happens late in the ball game. But D'Angelo keeps his hitting streak alive, gets a base hit. Casey scampers home after his double, so two hits for the Reds in the inning. And it's a 6-3 game. D'Angelo down at first. Here comes Willie Moe. Jimenez longest hit streak of the year, eight straight. Pena struck out first time up. Trying to stretch a four game hitting streak of his own. And Matheny and Supine will get on the same page. McCluskey Chevrolet, home of the quick credit guarantee. One click, one call. One number can do it all. 761-1111.com. McCluskey Chevrolet. The Cardinals have one of the greatest shortstops ever in the Hall of Fame in Ozzie Smith. 
many Reds fans most of them who watched him play and even those who were from other teams and the Cardinals in particular would agree that David Concepcion is Hall of Fame caliber and when you look at that big red machine team um, the Geronimo wins four straight gold gloves I mean, there's so many great players on that team sometimes you get overshadowed and I think that's been the, the greatest thing to be a deterrent for Davey not numbers but the fact that during that period of time he wasn't the star of the ball club nor was he the the, the most the big best media darling either mm -hmm. I think the fact that he spoke Spanish as a first language the fact that he wasn't one of the, the top guys on the team from the standpoint of being interviewed and in the spotlight all the time that his numbers as impressive as they are get kind of pushed into the background. I've always said that once you open the door with shortstops and have Phil Rizzuto in the in the Hall of Fame, you've got to have Ozzy Smith. Obviously, he's in it. You got to have Barry Larkin. You got to have Omar Vizquel and David Concepcion. All of them deserving because the numbers are are actually superior to some of those players that are in there. Be very interesting because the the criteria, the numbers are the same, but what is different now is the voting contingent. Now it's the Hall of Famers who vote on it as a veterans committee. Here's the one two to Pena. Does he hold on it. Yes he does two balls two strikes and there was a 19 member veterans committee that voted on players like Davey or Ron Santo or Tony Oliva. Now it's the Hall of Famers who vote and there's two sides of it. Many of those Hall of Famers know these players like Oliva and Gil Hodges and Santo and Concepcion. Here's the 2 2. Missing 3 2. The other side of it is they're the Hall of Famers so they don't want to dilute what they did and, and will they be more stringent will they be less stringent so you think they feel that it's diluted if they have more players in like that I think many of the Hall of Famers feel that the Veterans Committee was too lenient in allowing some people into the hall so it's going to be an interesting dynamic here's the three two to Willie Moe that's a bullet but rolling wow what hands by rolling they get one they get two that's another gold glove down a third that's what stops a rally. Roland, brilliant snare of a bad hop. The Reds get it There's Jim Edmonds to lead it off as we head to the top of five. Edmonds, a walk and a double, knocked in the third run in the third inning for the Cardinals. Now you talk about short circuiting rallies, and you talk about that, Chris, you do as a pitcher, and there's no greater help that you'll get as a pitcher when you get a defensive play like that looked like a simple five four three in the scorebook but that last hop was a wicked one not only did he make the play he turns it into two well, the ball was simply scalded down there there are some third basemen you see that just simply don't make that play some of its luck some of its skill obviously worked against the Reds right there you hit it to the wrong guy that's the bottom line center field and third base couple of places you want to stay away, away from. Uh, maybe shortstop too. <laughs> There's not many places <laughs> on this club you want to hit the ball too. You got to hit it over the fence. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Edmonds fouls it off. Take another look at the play by rolling down at third. I mean, good job by Willie Mo. I mean, he just smokes this ball. And it's just yeah, it goes on one hop down there. But as hard as that ball was hit, probably came off the bat nearly 95 to 100 miles an hour. You got to be on your toes with Willie Moe up there anyway if you're playing third base. Brilliant defensive third baseman, great offensive player too, Scott Rowland. Ironically, before the Cardinals got Scott Rowland, there was interest with the Reds to get Aaron Boone from Cincinnati when there was some talk that the Reds might make a deal when they were unsure whether they'd be able to sign Boone to a long term deal. Well, they got Rowland and eventually signed him to a multi year contract. Roland Edmonds McGuire all three additions added to the Cardinals and after they came in in free agent years wound up signing long term deals staying in St. Louis. Three two swing and a miss Van Poppel gets his third strikeout. One out here's Reggie Sanders. Hey, Monday on the Best Sports Show period presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. They'll talk to Indians pitcher C.C. Sabathia about his all-star game experience and whether or not Cleveland can stay in the hunt in the Central. Plus the worm, Dennis Rodman, talks about his plans to try another comeback and his thoughts on the Lakers' wild offseason. It's the Best Sports Show period tomorrow on Fox Sports Net. How about the Indians? Eight home runs. 
out on the West Coast in Seattle. Unbelievable. Baboom, baboom, baboom. Scoreboard today Cubs and Milwaukee scoreless in the second at Wrigley. Houston leading San Diego 2 0 in the third. Florida and Pittsburgh tied 1 1 in the fifth. And the fourth, Atlanta leads Montreal 11 3. And the Mets lead Philadelphia 1 0 in the fifth. We got the makings of some pretty good races in that Eastern Division race in the National League. Philadelphia starts the day a game ahead of Atlanta. Florida's three back. The Mets are three back. And it looks like that one's going to stay that way for a while. Here's the one one to Reggie. A strike out and a walk. It's pretty good to center. Willie Moe back turning looking. He won't catch up with this. That's off the facade of the party room. And that'll be a home run for Sanders. Number 15 on the year for Reggie. His first against Cincinnati this year. His ninth career homer against the Reds. So Sanders gets the run back that the Reds got last inning. Well, he's got plenty of power in case you've forgotten about him. Reggie Sanders, a former Red, former Reds first round draft pick. A shortstop growing up, a very fine center fielder and right fielder, and now he goes deep right out the front door here at Great American Ballpark. Well, that ball was smoked. You didn't have to look, you know. You could hear it. Yep. So Sanders homers. 7 3 St. Louis, and here's Mabry. Western Division race after last night's game. San Francisco a game and a half back of the Dodgers. San Diego only two and a half back. It looks like they're hanging in. And Popple can't get it. Larkin charges, scoops, and he gets it. Nice play, Barry Larkin. Had to come a long way forward, do or die, and he made the play. Comes up the middle, the ball does, and Barry's got to come charging hard. That ball slowing down because of the thick grass here at Great American Ballpark. The scoop, the throw, Larkin playing flawlessly. How thick is the grass here at Great American Ballpark? Well, it rivals any ballpark that we've seen in recent years. Tiger Stadium in Detroit, Wrigley Field in Chicago. Here's Matheny. And Joe Patini, the veteran minor league manager and coach of the Cardinals, and the guy who primarily hits their infielders' ground balls before the game, he was saying today after hitting ground balls again, you know, I'm going to have to go on the disabled list after this four game series here, just trying to hit balls through this grass. I'm exhausted. My arms are dead. <laughs> it's worked to advantage of the Reds, though. It's thinning out a little bit as yep. the weather warms up and you get more play on it of course it was very thick at the beginning of the year something that you know the Reds I think have done a little bit by design knowing that they've got primarily a sinker ball pitching staff backhand play Frio bounces up and he got him taking a page from Scott Rowland a goal glove kind of play by number six great play Ryan for instant replay of a gem Chris boy he goes all the way over the line makes a diving catch right there's robbing at least two bases and Ryan Friel doesn't really matter where you put him, does it? Center field, third base, he can play second base. A guy that would look like he was going to spend his career as a utility minor league infielder has come up to Cincinnati this year, and he's been everything that the Reds have been looking for and finally have. Spark plug offensively in all five positions he's played at. He's flashed some brilliant moments, and that's one of the best plays he's made of the year. Brilliant defensive play at third. And here's Vanderwall as we go to the bottom of five. Seven runs, eight hits for St. Louis. Three runs, three hits for the Reds. Vanderwall's two run homer came after a walk to Dunn in the second. That gave the Reds a momentary lead, two to one. Right. Cardinals have won seven of the nine games played between these two teams this year, and more often than not, Reds have had leads in almost every one of those games. Unable to hold them. Well, 
told you about the numbers on Supan. The you know, as you look at you know before every game you look at numbers, players against pitchers, and pitchers against opposing players, and the one thing that jumps out at you and there's a ground ball to second, one away, and here's Jason Larue. Here are your lottery winning numbers. Last night, pick three, nine, nine, two, nine, nine, two. Pick four, three, five, seven, seven, three, five, seven, seven. Super Lotto Plus, 16, 26, 27, 35, 44. 16, 26, 27, 35, 44. Special number eight. Hope you had a winner tonight in the Ohio Lottery. Bit of a sprinkle hitting the ballpark right now, so some of the fans are heading for cover. One of those. Showers that we talked about when the day started. Tim Hummels moved into the on deck circle with Ben Popola. Hit pretty good by LaRue. The left, it'll be off the wall. Nice grab by Mabry, and that will hold LaRue to a single. Bare hand stab by Mabry as he caromed off the wall. If it gets by him, LaRue has an easy double. Instead, he's held to a single. He got it up. Jeff Sapon did, and that's where Jason LaRue likes it. And he puts a charge in it right there. One of those balls that he hits so squarely that it has kind of a humpback line drive on the arc. And brought back into the infield very quickly, and that's a hard, long single. See the raindrops falling. Sky bright, but the rain coming down. Here's Hummel who will pinch it for Van Poppel. Now the thing that, that really gets you Chris if you're Dave Miley or any of us as we look at those numbers and you look at the pitcher batter matchups like today for instance against Jeff Supine Ken Griffey Jr. nine for 16 and four homers. Don't you think you'd like to have him in that. Well, I'd like to have him in that lineup every day. Yep. He changes the lineup and it was very clear that when Ken Griffey's in the lineup and he's swinging the bat when he's healthy that is he always swings the bat but when he's healthy. And you put him in that lineup with Adam Dunn and Sean Casey, all three of them different types of hitters. Boy, they really make a right-handed hitter, right-handed pitcher work extra tough. And you know, he's you, you miss a superstar, and it's just impossible to replace. That turns to that list too, and the red short-handed. And ball, two strikes to Hummel. Beachmont Ford, easy to find, easy to deal with. Largest truck dealer in Southwest Ohio with over 1,200 trucks available at all times. Beachmont Ford. A little low. Two and two. Pitch hit appearance for Hummel. The Reds have Jacob Cruz from the left side. The only left handed bat. They have the switch hitter, Valentin. Castro, Jason Romano, who joined the club today. That's a three, six, three double play. Nice play by Fulholtz, who turned the one hopper into a three, six, three double play. Second twin killing for the car. The umbrellas out, got the Parkers out. And as the rain trickles down, they, at first, it started to take out the tarp, and then they stopped taking the tarp out, so the indications are, judging by the radar, now that's a big time, all expenses, none of them spared. Contingency rain proposal, right? <laughs> as long as they don't try using that for the purpose it was designed for while it's on their head. Oh, there you go. You need a little Velcro on top of that cap. Brian Wagner, the youngest player on the roster, comes in after Todd Van Poppel leaves two and two thirds innings for Van Poppel out of the bullpen. Now it's time for Wagner, last year's number one draft pick. Line shot. Larkin has it in the air. He'll throw it to first just to be safe. It's a line drive out. Supan retired. You were right, George. It is a hard hitting 0 0 0 for <laughs> Supan. <laughs> nice play by Larkin looking through the raindrops to haul it in. So one away as Wagner takes over. Good job by Van Poppel. He did give up the home run to Reggie Sanders. That's the only hit he allowed in two and two thirds. See now he's starting to look and talk like a hitter down there, isn't he? There's Marlon Anderson. Fly it out, bounced out, struck out 0 for 3.
Reds pitching staff will get younger this week if you join this late. Brandon Clawson on his way up from Louisville. He will pitch on Tuesday. The Reds will make a roster move on Tuesday. Move they made today. Jason Romano up. Jesus Sanchez designated for assignment. And Chris, after watching Brandon Clawson in the last couple of years, I and watch him especially the, the last five weeks or so where he's been at the top of his game. He's one young man you have a feeling will benefit from the trip up here. Whether he pitches great or mediocre or whatever, he'll benefit because he has the aptitude. He's got the tools, no doubt about it, but he's got the aptitude to learn up here. Well, you know, you're right, George. I was very impressed from that perspective of him in spring training. We didn't really get to know him all that well. We talked to him quite a bit and all, but Still, I haven't got a chance to see him pitch live except spring training, and he did impress me. But what really has impressed me is the fact that he is leading the league in strikeouts down there. What doesn't impress me is also leading the league in walks. So command is an issue for him. He's a guy that misses the bat, obviously. And you come up here and command of your fastball is more important than anywhere else. Proved today by Jose Acevedo. When you hang a couple of pitches to major league hitters, they don't miss them. They don't pull them foul. They hit them out of the ballpark or hit them up against a wall somewhere. So Clawson is just going to have to do what he did down in AAA, which is stay aggressive with his stuff and trust that his stuff can get big leaguers out. And I hope that this is going to be a trip to the major leagues that will last him for the rest of his career. Anderson bounces out two away and here comes Renteria. Hey Reds fans, you know how easy it is to dress like your favorite player? Just go to CincinnatiReds.com and find out whatever you want. Jerseys, t-shirts, caps, and more. CincinnatiReds.com is the place to shop for all your Reds merchandise. The rain slackened a bit. Now it's coming down pretty hard. Here's Renteria. Homer single and a fly ball to center two for three. I want to say a happy birthday today to former Cardinal player and manager and now the Yankee manager Joe Torre born in Brooklyn New York on this day in 1940. Joe's wife Allie's family of course from Cincinnati. Brothers sisters the whole family still a lot of them making their home here. One of the first class guys of baseball Joe Torre. Ball down and away. One and two. The other news for the Reds is that their number one draft pick last year, Brian Wagner, rocketed from college to the major leagues. High schooler Homer Bailey has reached a tentative agreement with the Reds on a new contract, and he is on his way to Cincinnati. They'll have a physical form tomorrow if everything goes as planned. They could have a final announcement of a contract agreement either tomorrow or the next day. So good news, Chris, is that if he signs, everything's okay. They can at least get him into the field of professional baseball. You know, ride the buses, see what it's like, so that you get some value out of this first year. Well, sometimes there's no real rush to get a high school player or even sometimes a college player into your minor league system too soon because you don't want to over pitch him. He's probably been pitching an awful lot. He's a guy that went to the state tournament uh, with his high school and pitched a lot of innings and so on. So you want to give that arm a rest. At the same time you don't want to have him lose the entire year and you're right because pro ball is entirely different than high school. It's even much different than college baseball. So you kind of get him acclimated to the fact that he's a professional now. Here's how we act. Here's how we travel. Here's what we're expected to do and so on. And I think it's important to kind of be around guys like that and also for the decision makers in the organization Tim Nairn Grant Greiser and the scouts and so on to take a look at him and see where he's best going to be uh, the remainder of the year and of course where he may start next year do you want to send him to instruction league do you want to send him somewhere to have some off season instruction or uh, physical training conditioning of some kind so you need to kind of evaluate and it's evaluation time for both guys both parties but nonetheless it's important to sign that number one draft pick because that's the guy who is most likely to make it to the major leagues, as is evidence right here by Brian Wagner. Here's Albert Pujols. Time for our Geico Direct moment. The Reds hitting instructor Chris Chambliss is talking about Pujols and how impressive he is. He's one of the best. Uh, 
Uh, the why is is his balance. Uh, he, he's, he, you know, if, if you look at his legs, you know, I'm a, I'm a grassroots kind of a hitter. Uh, I look at I look at the bottom up, and and, and uh, his legs are tremendous position, and and they don't move. You know, you keep, it's like it no matter what speed is thrown at him, uh, slow, fast, whatever. The, his legs are always solid. And, and and that's a dangerous thing because because when those guys are in position they're strong and he's got a quick bat so uh, uh, that's the first thing I see with Albert is, is his out, outstanding balance. The whole package balance power he's got a quick bat he hits he hits with power and then he steps in with two out and a runner out that's on the inside corner. Jerry Davis the crew chief and the first base umpire today keeps peering in at Doug Gallant the grounds crew head here for the Reds Doug keeps running back and forth checking the radar down underneath right outside the Reds dugout as they keep an eye on what they probably thought Chris was just a momentary shower but that shower is continuing longer than they probably originally anticipated looks like the rain activity from the look of the radar George is a little worse south of us so. Maybe this is just one of those pop up deals that is going to be in and out of here. Certainly the folks attending the ball game hope so. But hope that there's enough paper towels left around the ballpark so when they go back to their seats, they can dry them off. That's the worst thing about going to a ball game when it rains. Better off not even leaving your seats. It's the only way they'll stay dry. <laughs> now, what's the weather report down in Walton at the Ponderosa? It's rain. It's raining. So the party's a little Bad short day for rain. We got the sluggers <laughs> baseball party going on. I do not want 100 people inside the house. Uh, you don't or Debbie doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it now. Three and one. That's a bouncer over Wagner's head. Here comes Jimenez. He scoops, loses control, not in time. Wet ball and he couldn't get a handle on it. And full holds will be on. Well, Albert Pujols scampers over the first base back. Now, here's a guy that runs hard all the time, even though yesterday he was checked out for a bad hamstring, something that's been bothering him. But he's hustling down the line. A little quick clap of hands after he goes beyond the bag to kind of congratulate himself for hustling hard and getting an infield hit. You know, when you're a, a player like Pujols, you're covering right around 300. A couple of extra hits here and there could make the difference between you batting 298 or 302. And how you hustle back in April, May, and June sometimes gives you those batting average numbers that are just going to make you stand out. Credited with an infield hit, so now it's first and second with two outs. A walk and an infield hit. And here comes Roland. Roland today lined out, single to center, fly to center. Uh oh, in the corner, that's going to be extra bases. One hop off the wall. One run will score. Pull holds to third. They're going to send him. They have a shot. Larkin's throw won't be in time. He'll score. Rowland will go into third. All with two outs. And how important was Pull holds beating out that infield hit? It results in two more runs, and it's now the Cardinals in control. Uh, they almost systematically dismantle you, this Cardinal Ball Club does. You make bad pitches and they hammer them. They run the bases well. They hustle well, even though they're ailing and their legs are old and they don't feel all that good. I'll tell you what, Scott Rollins ends up on third base on this play, even though it's a line drive off the left field wall. Renteria scores no problem from second. Pujols will score all the way from first. He never stops playing hard. And Roland sees the ball go into the home plate area, so he scampers over to third. Well, Roland sitting at third after a double that chases in two more. It's 9 3. 10 hits now for the Cardinals. We're here in the sixth inning. Roland himself bothered. Roland. Field hit, scampers home. And Roland winds up at third. A runner at third, two away. It's a ball to Edmonds. One ball, one strike. Watch Roland. He's got the short strides, Chris. The knee not 100%, but 
He reads the play perfectly and he'll cruise into third. Tony LaRusse's thought this weekend was to give Roland two days off, not one. You got to sell that to Scott Roland, though. Couldn't do that today. Roland was back in the lineup. Now you know you want to play. He's an everyday player. He's been known throughout his career as an everyday player. He has been sidelined. You know, when he was a young guy, he the Philly signed him to a long, long-term contract, long before they had to, and he came up with a back problem. People whispered for a while that maybe that was going to restrict him, but it has not. Now they're whispering MVP. 9-3, St. Louis going to the bottom of the six. Possible and fans trying to stay as dry as possible as we go to the bottom of six. Supan still in there. Ryan Friel top of the order due up. How dry are we? Always good to carry one of those you know, the little packet parkers with you. Huh? Well, you know, they've been predicting pop up showers for a couple of days now. So those that have come for the weekend, and there are a lot of Cardinal fans here. You don't know where they've all come from. Cardinal country. Not too far from Cincinnati. Some people down in Louisville area are still Cardinal fans from the years of having the Redbirds, their AAA franchise down there. Of course, now it's the Louisville Bats, but eventually you're going to get to use one of those babies if you come to enough ball games. Here's Friel 0 for 2, fly ball to right, ground ball to second. Phil Norton up and tossing in the bullpen for Cincinnati. Acevedo started two and a third innings, seven hit six runs. Van Poppel, two and two thirds, one hit one run. And Wagner gave up the walk, the two hits, and the two runs in the sixth. There's Ryan, had a 10 game hitting streak snapped this weekend, trying to start a new one. Strike two, so Roland will drop back from his perch even with the bag at third, deep at third now. And that's why. Two balls, two strikes. The JTM Food Group would like to salute the people of our community who unselfishly volunteer their time to help others. JTM Food Group, where service is success. We'll go full three and two. Sportsnet welcomes our viewers watching on NK Telco in New Knoxville, Ohio, and Bel Air TV cable in Bel Air, Ohio. Thanks for watching Reds Baseball on Fox Sportsnet and welcome aboard. Full count to Freya. Speaking of minor league. Spots where there was the Reds Triple A home in Indianapolis now in Louisville. Ryan Friel made his way through the Toronto organization. Injuries really prevented him from being a major league player, but those there's a ground ball to short. Renteria scoops, gets him by a half a step and there's one away. Cardinals have been very impressed by Friel watching him at the end of last year, beginning of this year, and how could you not be, Chris? I mean, whatever he's been asked to do, he's added energy to the Reds. He's provided good defense. He's provided a spark that you really need to be a winning ball club. You know, it's funny because Ryan Friel, as good as he is here at the major league level this year, was good in the minor leagues, but he was kind of thumbnailed as a, as a utility player. And sometimes when you're in the minor leagues and you're a utility player, that can work against you. Uh, they don't think that you're going to be a player in the major league because all you are is a utility player in the minors. It's almost like a, a moniker that you'd rather not have. So I think that's one thing that kept him from being up in the major leagues all that much. He did have some injuries as well down there, but 
he's been able to shake that and show people that he can play big league third base, big league center field, big league around the infield anywhere. He's the Reds' backup catcher if they need a third catcher, and uh, I wouldn't doubt if he could drive the team bus, too. He'd do it to stay up here. One ball, one strike to Larkin. 0 for 2, a pop up and a strikeout with Casey on deck. Like the rain is finally pretty much stopped. Still overcast as Larkin steps in. For Larkin, the home run yesterday, you can see a little bit of a drizzle again starting to pop. Yesterday, the home run by Larkin, career run batted in number 950. This hit pretty good, but it'll stay in the park. Avery under it, he's got it. That ties Larkin with David Concepcion for number five on the club's all-time run batted in list. Don't forget, more Reds baseball will be coming your way. Brewers come to town. Real Reds at 6.30. The game will follow tomorrow night. It's the Reds and the Brewers right here on FSN Ohio. Tomorrow, Aaron Harang will get the start for the Reds. Don Gullett, Dave Miley pushed him back to the end of the rotation, giving him some extra days rest. and. It appears that the youngster Hendrickson will be the starting pitcher for Milwaukee coming up from the minor league. So two bright young prospects will get their chance. Lawson for Cincinnati Hendrickson for Milwaukee in the series. Here's case. Bounced out double. And scored a run in the fourth. Renteria has it. Marlon Anderson gets out of his way and they get the out. That goes as a 6 3 put out on the overshift by the Cardinals. So the Reds go 1 2 3 in the sixth of the seventh we go. For the Reds, it'll be the fourth pitcher of the afternoon for Dave Miley's crew. It was the starter, Jose Acevedo, who ran into the most problems. Two and a third innings of six run baseball for Jose. Van Poppel came in for two and two thirds, gave up a run. Ryan Wagner, a couple of runs in an inning, and here's the left-hander Phil Norton 38 times and Norton's been out there trying to get that earned run average of 566 down to a little more respectable number. Reggie Sanders will lead it off. Sanders a homer in three plate appearance strike out in an intentional walk. Reggie's homer is 15th of the year. Sanders Mabry Matheny 6 7 and 8 for St. Louis. <laughs> Broken bat down to third. Friel scoops. Got it. One away. Sanders retired, and here comes Mabry. Hey, senior citizens, the Reds have a deal for you. It's a senior citizen discount special at the ballpark. On Tuesday, Reds meet up with the Brewers. Day game, 1235. You can get half price tickets. That's right. All Reds fans 60 and older may purchase half price, non-premium tickets in advance of game day. It's Tuesday June 20th at 1235 Reds versus the Brewers for the Senior Citizen Day special. Here's Mabry. Double sacrifice fly ground out. Cubs put a run on the board. They lead Milwaukee one nothing now in the fourth. Brewers come here. Cardinals go to Wrigley to play the Cubs. And don't forget Sierra Mist, shockingly refreshing. Unleash the fresh taste of lemon lime Sierra Mist from the makers of Pepsi, the choice of the Reds. came up as a Cardinal traded away and happy to be back again this time as a utility player and pretty valuable off the bench with a left hand bat. There's the second hit of the day. 
towards the alley. Vanderwall will cut it off. Mabry's going to try for two. Here comes the throw. It's right on the money. He's a dead duck. Great sign. Vanderwall, after the knee surgery on wet grass, makes a nice play. Yeah, you've got to figure that he was a little tentative going after that ball, and he really wasn't. Makes a little infielder play right there by barehanding it and firing on a one hop. Perfect shot to Juan Castro, who delivers the tag. So John Mabry feeling with six run lead that there's nothing to lose by trying to stretch it into a double, and he gets the tag down. I don't know, I don't know if he ever got the tag down or not, but the Ball beat him and Mabry's out. Castro in for Larkin at short. Change for the Reds at the end of the inning. Here's a dribbler. LaRue pounces on it and they got him. That's a good inning for Norton. One, two, three. Reds running out of outs. They've got nine left to do some business. They trail by six. Chrysler game summary. Five run third has been the story of this game so far. Cardinals, nine runs, 11 hits, no errors. The Reds, no runs, two three runs four hits and no errors the Reds got two runs in the second to take a lead two to one on John Vanderwall's homer his first as a red in 2004 that was a short lived lead though because in the third against Jose Acevedo Renteria a home run that started it off and from there on all it was downhill for Cincinnati here's Acevedo's delivery to Renteria the Renteria home run number seven on the year that tied the game at two. After that, a walk to Albert Pulholtz. Roland singles. Edmonds gets a double. That makes it three to two. The lead belongs to the Cardinals at that point. And after an intentional walk, a sacrifice fly by Mabry makes it four to two. The Cardinals had the lead. And the clincher, Chris, was Mike Matheny. He's been killing the Reds. He steps up and a big double. Yeah, figure a guy that for, who is from Reds country, Reynoldsburg, Ohio, right outside of Columbus, is able to do a lot of damage last couple of days. He's picked up some key hits against the Reds. Big key yesterday and even more so today. A double plated two more it was six to two and Matheny's Cardinals lead this game now nine to three as we go to the bottom of inning number seven when we started this day. There were questions for both managers. Dave Miley wondered which Jose Acevedo would show up. Tony La Russa wondered which Jeff Supan would show up. And so far, only three runs, four hits. That's what Matheny and Supan have issued today. And that's one of the reasons why the Cardinals have a comfortable 9-3 lead as we head to the bottom of seven. Dunn, Jimenez, and Pena do up. Castro, by the way, batting in the number nine position and Norton who came in to pitch batting in Larkin's position the number two position here's Adam who walked scored on the homer and then bounced to second 0 for one three home run run home run yesterday was the big shot gave the Reds the seven to four lead they won it seven to five all told of his twenty six homers seventeen have been solos that's a bullet one half off the wall in the right field corner that'll be a double for Dunn his seventeenth double of the year Well, nice to see the big guy swinging the bat a little bit. Had a big home run yesterday, a three run shot that essentially iced the ball game. And here's a guy in the absence of Ken Griffey Jr. You have to have Adam Dunn step it up a little bit. He's one of the few guys in this lineup that can really put the fear into the opposing pitcher. And with that swing, Adam Dunn picks up another double. So, leadoff hitter in scoring position. Here comes D'Angelo. Fly ball to the left. And a base hit that stretched his hitting streak to eight straight, knocked in the third run for the Reds back into fourth. a delicious twist on ordinary chicken salad Arby's market fresh chicken salad try a sandwich a wrap or a bowl one great chicken salad three ways to enjoy it now at Arby's a 
A liner over and through his head. That's a base hit. Dunn had to hold until he was sure Renteria couldn't get it, so he'll stop at third. It's first and third for Cincinnati. I would nobody out not likely that Adam Dunn is going to try to score on that anyway. Good bit of hitting by D'Angelo Jimenez. Look how he really waits back on that ball. He keeps his hands back as well as anybody. We talk all the time about how he likes to work the count, but he just feathers that ball in the shallow left field to pick up a base hit. Freeze until you know it's to the infield. Two straight hits, and that'll get him rustling around in the bullpen for St. Louis. Here's Pena. Willie Moe struck out, hit a bullet down to third that Roland turned into a 5 4 3 double play to end the fourth. Dave Miley and the Reds hoping for another bolt of lightning from Willie Moe's bat. Steve Klein, left hander, starting to loosen for St. Louis. Ball one strike to Willie Moe. Well, he's got his batting average up to 287 now, Willie Moe, even though he's got 0 for 2 on the day. George, have you seen anybody in the long time you've been around baseball make such advancement between spring training and midseason as Willie Moe has? Well, he just continues to, to grow in leaps and bounds. I think if you talk to where he was from and where he is today, Hard to find anybody who's come that far. Here's a bullet off his bat yesterday, Chris. Well, you know, he's getting regular playing time now, and when he centers it, there's just no question about it. He hits it as hard as anybody. I mean, you talk to the Reds veterans, you talk to Ken Griffey Jr., you talk to Barry Larkin, guys that have seen players over the years, and you know, they'll raise their eyebrows at his power, his strength, and what he's capable of doing. You just never know until you start playing if all that can come together. That's a bullet down the line, curving. It'll go foul by about 10 feet. I mean, that, he was jammed on that, and he still almost got it out. Well, if you've ever gone through the bat rack and picked up Willie Moe's baseball bat, it, it is huge. It is heavy, and it's got a big head on it. And you've got to be a big man to swing it. One ball, two strikes. Setting up the way is Matheny. That's a line drive to right. That'll get done home. And that's the most impressive package. The hits that he's got in the right field. That's what Barry Larkin has tried to tell him. Ken Griffey Jr. has tried to tell him, wait, wait, wait. you got enough strength to hit the ball out. Take that pitch. Go the other way with it. Exactly. Even though that ball is inside, he knows with two strikes, he's trying to use more of the field. And he does exactly that. The difference I see in Willie Bum is that he doesn't panic anymore at the plate. Earlier in the year when he was used more sporadically, he would get into a situation where he would just kind of chase any pitch that a pitcher would throw up there. That is no longer the case. Tony La Russa on his way out to make a double switch. And I hope you heard the interview that we had before the game today with Chris Chambliss, the Reds hitting instructor, and the point that he made. And, you know, you, Chris has been so calm, cool, collected, and patient with Willie Moe and his development. He said, you know, we try a lot of different things, but until you get to play every day, you don't know if those things are going to translate into something on the field. And so far, they are for Willie Moe. Well, while the pitching change takes place, we'll take time out for these messages. You're watching Reds baseball on Fox Sports Net. They're one of the finer left-handers in the league for Tony La Russa. He came into yesterday's ball game, and he was the victim of that three-run shot by Adam Dunn to essentially ice the ball game. The, only the second home run given up by Klein on the year, the first one given up to a left-hander. Boy, he has been awfully tough all year long. Let's take another look at that hanging breaking ball that Adam Dunn rifled out of here way back into the sun deck. So Klein will come in to pitch and with John Vanderwall scheduled up Dave Miley will go to his bench and bring the newest red up from the minor leagues today. There's so Taguchi will come in in the double switch Taguchi hitting in the ninth spot Klein in Mabry's spot the number seven spot and here's Jason Romano up for his second stint with the Reds this year. So Romano, the right hand batter, will get the at bat against Klein. Klein has just been superlative all season long. Blip in the radar screen yesterday, the homer by Dunn. That's only the third homer that Klein has given up in four years as a St. Louis Cardinal to a left hander. 
fine left handers this year. Coming into today hitting 186. What about righties and righties 267. So that's the reason for the switch for Miley. So Romano right into the fray gets a chance to help out his teammates once again. Klein gave up the homer yesterday and all you need to know about Steve Klein and his personality was his comment after the game. Said, Jim Edmonds was a center fielder everybody says he was why didn't he bail me out. That was about 20 rows up in right field and Edmonds made some miraculous catches but that was one he could never make but that's Steve Klein. Well they called him the swing on that pitch even without checking the checking the first base umpire. That Romano didn't think he did. But Greg Gibson did. Klein ahead in the count now. Here's the one two. Off the end of the bat. LaRue on deck for Cincinnati. Romano through the Texas organization and on to the Dodgers in Tampa Bay. Picked up by the Reds earlier this year. Spent a brief period with Cincinnati and sent down to Louisville. Down low. Well, he really struggled at the plate when he was up before Jason Romano did. And you know, if you're Dave Miley, you got a couple of different options. One is to keep John Vanderwall in the ball game. But if you're going by stats and matchups and late in the ball game, a lot of managers like to do that. You bring in the right hander to face the lefty, even though there's no question that Jason Romano is not in the same category of hitter as just as John Vanderwall. He got him. Waves at that one down and away. That's the first out of the inning. Romano's retired on the strikeout. And out comes LaRusso. Now yeah, chase the bat, chase the bad pitch right there to Jason Romano. That little slider down in the dirt. So Steve Klein, if you read the intention of Tony LaRusso, did the job he needed to do, and Tony's going to the bullpen once again. So the right hander will be coming in while the pitching change takes place. We'll take time out for these messages. You're watching Reds baseball on Fox Sports now. Dander Jason Aru do up. Jason Romano dispatched by Steve Klein, the lefty, and now the right hander Kiko Calero comes in. The Reds saw him last year as a starter, as a spot starter for the Cardinals. He comes in now as a reliever. If you're a right handed hitter, you expect to see some sliders off of this guy. He is a slider machine. So Calero will face Jason LaRue. Calero got his second career win against the Reds earlier this year. He's got two runners out there. Love to coax a ground ball from LaRue. Jason love to finally cash one in against the Cardinals. Robbed of a home run by Edmonds in this series. It's the third time in two years that LaRue's been robbed by Edmonds. So Jason. Trying to keep it going with Castro hitting in the ninth spot due up behind him. Jimenez at second. Pena down at first. There's the wrinkle. Slider, slider, slider. Jason would very much like to stay anywhere away from number 15 and sit back. You know, even though it was against the Reds, I don't think I can see that catch enough. Yep. It was that good. It was outstanding. Here's the 1 1. Don't say that to Jason, though. He's seen enough of it. I mean, twice last year he was robbed. Take a single here. Reds need some hits, need some base runners. They trail by five. That's a little wide. Well, Calero's never been a pitcher that is all that interested in throwing a fastball for a strike although here on a 3 1 count you wonder if he just might come in there again that last pitch was a fastball and he's a guy that throws about 80 percent in sliders Cardinals looking for a ground ball from LaRue LaRue one for two against Calero in their previous meetings 
Here's the three one. That's a fast ball waves at it. Full count three two chased ball four on that one. Throw on three one. Do you throw on three two? Yep. Fastball fouled off. We'll stay three two. You look at what's worked for the Cardinals this year. Their starting pitching has been healthy been very solid going deep into games and that's given their bullpen a chance to be rested and they've responded by being very efficient from the get go of this year. Everybody's had a hand in the Cardinal success including Calero. Here's a three two again. He got it. Came back with his slider gets the roof. So back to back strikeouts after the Reds got three straight hits. Now, I'm not so sure that either the last couple of pitches that went strike two or strike three were strikes. That ball looked like it was down and away, but for a moment looked like it was going to be a strike. Calero's not the kind of pitcher that can work through the order more than once, boy, but he can be very effective against right handers when you bring him in for just a short amount of time. Here's Castro first at bat of the afternoon. He took over for Barry Larkin. That's a slider in there for a strike. Slider and it's no balls, two strikes. Castro one for three against Calero in their meetings. 31,699 paid for the most part. They've been pretty quiet, the red side of the fans today. 9 4 St. Louis. Trying to expand the strike zone. Castro won't offer. One and two. Away again. That's banged through the middle by Castro. Here comes Jimenez around third. Here comes Edmonds throw. He did it again. Edmonds nails another Reds rally. Jim Edmonds came up firing to cut down a potential run at the plate. Castro singles, nothing to show for it. Nine. Changes for the Reds as we head to the top of the eighth inning. Willie Mopena moves from center to right field. Jason Romano stays in. He'll play center. Dunn's still in left. Real Castro Jimenez Casey across the infield and LaRue still behind the plate. Here's Norton starting his second inning of work. Gave up a base hit, but a nice play by Vanderwall nailed Mabry trying to stretch a single into a double. Here's Taguchi enter the game on the double switch, hitting in the ninth spot in the order. In at 260, a homer 12 knocked in. Down to third, but foul. Nine runs, 11 hits for St. Louis now. Four runs, eight hits for the Reds. To join this late, a big five run third for the Cardinals, the difference in the ball game. All five runs scored against Jose Acevedo, and Acevedo went two and a third, allowed seven hits and six runs. Here's another look at the Edmonds play, Chris. He just I keeps wish, doing it. I wish they stopped testing this guy either with his glove or with his arm. That a perfect one hopper to 
Mike Matheny who blocks the plate and D'Angelo Jimenez is denied. I think we see that he can do that. Another assist for Edmonds. And a Reds rally snuffed out. Oh. Big swing by Taguchi curving down the line. It'll go foul deep into the lower level seats. On his tiptoes to get to that one. Oh and two. He's up for three against Norton. Stay away this time. Cubs leading Milwaukee one nothing in the six. Brewers have only two hits off Kerry Wood in that game. There's a swing and a miss. Gucci retired strikeout number one for Norton Bop to the top of the order Marlon Anderson nice little pitch by Phil Norton you know he's got a good curveball that he uses mostly on left handers but that little bit of a change up right there Norton's got that pitch to move away from righties to neutralize those guys and he can locate it right there he's going to be able to do something with it. There's Anderson. He's been one of the few Cardinals that has not contributed to the St. Louis score today. He's 0 for 4. Fly ball to right. Thrown out by LaRue and a dribbler in front of the plate. Struck out and bounced to second. Off his foot foul. Ray King. Up and loosening for the Cardinals as you look at the bottom of the eighth for Cincinnati. Casey and Dunn are due up third and fourth in the inning, and the pitcher spot is due up second. So the second left hander of the Cardinal bullpen up and loosening. Tony LaRusso has always liked at least two, sometimes three left handers in the bullpen. And you never know. During the course of a ball game, here's the 1 1. When the key at bat will come, and if it's a left handed batter, he's always believed, Jimmy Leland, very much the same way when he was in Pittsburgh or Denver or wherever, that you want that extra left hander that can maybe make the difference in six, seven, or eight, not just the ninth. He's had two great ones this year. Well, there are some that feel, in fact, a lot of them were in town this weekend with the Sabre convention that feel that. The closer and the role of the closer is way overrated that if you have a the best pitcher by far in a bullpen that he ought to be used in a situation maybe in the seventh eighth inning instead of in the ninth inning. Use them when you're going to face the best opposing hitter or in that situation that looks like the other team is ready to score some runs. Another bouncer to second two away and here comes Renteria. And don't forget it'll be Kids Day at Great American Ballpark thanks to Time Warner Cable on Saturday July 31st kids 12 and younger you get pictures taken with uh, the Abba Dabba Doo man Fred Flintstone. You can be a part of it stop by the boomerang display located along the third base concourse for games and fun for all ages don't miss your photo op with the Roadrunner or the Powerpuff Girls during Time Warner Cable Kids Day Saturday July 31st as gates open at 1115. And we had one of those saber rights up here, David Smith of RetroSheet.org, George, who did a, a study of 122,000 games in Major League Baseball over the years and found that the team that leads after eight innings wins 95% of the time. And that was including games, of course, for decades previous to closers. So maybe the role of the closer is a little overstated. Well, the role of the closer sure has changed. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. Even Dennis Eckersley, when he started, he'll go into the Hall of Fame this year. The Raleigh Fingers, the Goose Gossies, the Bruce Suters, the Lee Smiths, when they first started, they go three two, innings, three yeah, innings sure. at a clip. Now it's not anywhere near that. If you go more than an inning, it's news. I mean, they have stats for how many closer appearances for more than an inning, and there aren't many these days. They've got stats for more than that. Mm -hmm. How many fly balls to end an inning have gone to the right fielder? We'll figure that out. 
back at Great American Ballpark, the pom poms have been sitting in the laps most of the afternoon for Reds fans. It's nine runs, 11 hits for St. Louis, four runs, eight hits for Cincinnati. And here's the second half of that left handed duo out of the Cardinals bullpen, former Red Ray King. He is awfully, awfully tough. A 136 earned run average, Ray King is. And Brian Fields got him solved right now. Base hit by Friel, his first of the day. He's one for four. And here comes Javier Valentin, the switch hitting catcher, will bat from the right side against King. Valentin will hit in the second spot, occupied by Norton. And Casey and Dunn do to follow. King's in there basically for Casey and Dunn this inning. Here's Valentin. Reds need base runners trailing by five here in the eighth. A little giddy up on that fastball at 91. Ray King came through the Reds minor league system. Finally got to be productive in the bullpen after he left Cincinnati. That's inside. And now he's become an everyday boost to Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan. One ball, one strike. That's one thing about having multiple left handers, but it's another thing about having multiple left handers that are good. <laughs> and that's I mean you can talk about you know people say you want a left hander and there are some teams that have had left handers just to have left handers but this Cardinal duo is lefty and they're good too. Well you know people say if you're left handed you can last forever but I think it helps a whole lot if you're good. Hit the right Sanders there got it. There's your first out and of the a lot end. of that George has to do with how often you're using you made a great point about the Cardinals earlier about how their starting pitching takes them into the seventh inning nearly every game they have as many quality starts by their starters as anybody in the league and because of that Tony La Russa can be very stingy as to how he uses his bullpen now he gets some criticism from time to time from going to his bullpen too often in and making moves that really aren't necessary but what he's able to do is keep that guy Steve Klein in there enough to stay sharp but not overwork. Ray King comes in enough to stay sharp but not overwork. Same for the rest of the gang down there, including Jason Isringhausen, the closer. So if Woody Williams and Matt Morris can give you six or seven strong innings. They turn it over to a very refreshed but sharp bullpen. Here's King, who is L. Casey to a 182 average in their meetings. Casey's gotten four hits and 22 at bats against Ray King. Today, one for three, a double to right to center. That came in the fourth inning. Dunn's on deck for Cincinnati. High in the air to right, but right there is Reggie. Got in on him just a little bit. Reggie snares it, two away. And here comes Adam Dunn. Done today, a walk, a stolen base, a ground out, and his 17th double of the year that led off the seventh. The Reds were knocking on the door in the seventh. Dunn doubled, Jimenez singled, Pena singled to pull the Reds to within five, nine to four. Two on, nobody out. Klein came in, struck out Romano. Calero struck out LaRue. Castro got a base hit, but the runner was thrown out at the plate on a perfect throw by Edmonds. So the inning short circuited. Friel still sitting down at first. Pull Holtz will play behind him. And here's Dunn. Dunn, two for 17, 118 against Ray King. So you see why LaRusso uses these guys against the Reds' lefties. Not holding Friel on. He'll. Take off for second. It'll be no stolen base. They didn't hold him on. So 
Franco at least he's in scoring position. Two balls no strikes to Dunn. Ball four. Dunn walks for the second time. So first and second. Two away, and here's D'Angelo. The men have stretched his hitting streak to eight straight with a base hit in the fourth, knocked in the Reds' third run, and he singled to the left in the seventh. He's two for three today. And here comes Dave Duncan out to talk to King. Now, you don't want to get into a situation where you begin to put runners on base and Make it a little bit nervous time. So Dave Duncan out there just trying to smooth Ray King down a little bit. Hasn't made an appearance today yet, so Duncan needs to come out and talk to King and Matheny. Doesn't take a lot to get Dave Duncan nervous. It doesn't. <laughs> he's always he's always thinking three steps ahead. Great catcher out of San Diego, part of that Oakland contingent as a player. And he and Tony, I don't know, Chris, but I can't think of another manager and pitching coach that have been together longer than Dave Duncan and Tony LaRusso. They started 83. You mean current. Yeah, 83. I don't mean maybe ever. They started in 83. Along with Billy Martin and Art Fowler. Uh, there were splits, though. I mean, yeah. you know, Fowler they, got they fired a couple connected. of times. They were always connected. <laughs> <laughs> They'd always meet somewhere and talk about it. Here's D'Angelo, pretty even Steven, huh? Left-handed, right-handed. <laughs> they were never very far from each other. But this is 21 years now for these two. That's a bouncer. King's got it, and he'll get himself out of trouble. Shovels it to Pujols. The Reds threaten a base hit and a walk. Nothing more than that in the eighth. 9-4 ball game. We go to the top of it goes the bullpen one more time he brings in the fifth hurler of the day for the Reds and it'll be John Reeling the right hander in for the 44th time Reeling was up yesterday uh, one batter away from being in the ball game but his turn never came up so he comes in today with a four and two record and a four ten earned run average just joining us Acevedo went two and a third seven hits six runs a lot Todd Van Poppel two and two thirds one hit one run Wagner pitched an inning allowed two hits and two runs Norton pitched two innings a hit and no runs a lot and here's John Reedling delivering to Albert Pujols that's a strike to Pujols today Albert flied to right walked and scored in the third base hit to uh, fly ball to center in the fourth and then a base hit in the sixth inning. Bouncer pass Castro in the center. That's a base hit for Albert. Another two hit game for Pulholtz. Two for four and a walk for Albert. He's down at first. Continues his 500 pace here on this series. And near 400 for his career against Cincinnati. You know, maybe the Reds ought to call up the Texas Rangers and figure out how they held him to a 100 something batting average. Oh, I thought you meant actually it was less than that it was 087. He was one for 14 against the Rangers this year with a single. And that was it. That was when he was limping through the very much so leg muscle. And that's you know we uh, we hope you had a chance to hear the comments of Chris Chambliss about pull holds earlier and he said just like Jeff Bagwell similar to Edmonds. I mean his whole key is balance and legs and when your hamstring either one is bothering you for a guy like that a guy who hits like that it changes your whole hitting approach even with that he fought through played through and he's still in there here's Roland so you're saying how many great hitters that you know of have skinny legs well strong base legs I mean 
And th you know, the one of the things that amazed me more than anything, how Andre Dawson continued to hit as well as he hit with all the knee problems and the difficulties that he had. Tony Oliva, another one. Mm -hmm. And Mantle, certainly in his day, too, with all the knee injuries. That tells you how great they, they could have been even greater. They were good players to start with, but imagine if they had the surgeries and the rehab that we sure. have today. They were back in the day stuck on playing on AstroTurf for yeah. all those games, uh, especially I, Dawson. Sure. I mean, Dawson used to spend two hours in the training room before he'd ever get ready to come into the clubhouse and get ready to play. His teammate, and that's why people say, is he a Hall of Famer? Anybody that was a teammate of Andre mm -hmm. Dawson's and saw what he had to do every day just to play would say this guy clearly is a Hall of Famer. Here's Roland, three and one. Talked about the AstroTurf that tore up a lot of knees. Dawson's problem started in Montreal. That's one of the reasons why Roland wanted to leave Philadelphia. I mean, the damage that he did to his back playing on that artificial surface. There were other reasons later on. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. If they'll boo Mike Schmidt, <laughs> you're not excluded either, Scott Roland. <laughs> Three, two. Really trying to coax a twin killing out of number 27. Deep to left center. Back is Romano. Will he have room at the wall? He'll haul it in. About 395 feet away. Roland's blast hauled in by Romano, and there's your first out. Well, two ways to look at this if you're John Reeling. One is that, hey, I use the big part of the ballpark, and I know exactly what I need to do to get the big guy out. The other is I better start getting the ball down a little bit better or in a different location because that was very close to being out there in the bullpen. Jason Romano waiting for the sun to come out. He's got those sunglasses perched just in case. And it is starting to peek through. Here's Edmonds. Walk, double, strikeout, strikeout. Reds and the Cardinals will play two more times in St. Louis after the the meetings this coming month they play one more time in St. Louis the end of the month but then after that they'll play the end of August third and fourth week of August Cincinnati will play the Cardinals here the 24th 25th 26th and the Reds will be there the week before so the Cardinals and Reds will not play in the month of September Edmonds to left that's heading towards the alley it'll roll all the way to the wall Cole holds Round second going to third. He's going to try to score. It gets away from the cutoff man and he'll score easily. I don't think Castro would have had a chance to get him anyways, but when it squirted away from him, he scored easily. And that'll be a run batted in for Edmonds, his 48th and 49th run batted in against Cincinnati in his career today. Well, Jim Edmonds went to that. Big widespread stance when he first came to the major leagues in order to keep his head perfectly still and drive the ball the other way. That and be able to put a little backspin on the ball. He does both with that pitch right there as he goes to the left center field very nicely. The ball just hits the wet grass and skips by Castro. I don't think there's a play at the plate, as you said, either, George. And the Cardinals are just pouring it on. Trio has it. He holds the runner, gets the out of Sanders at first. That's the second out of the inning. Reggie's retired. He homered earlier in the game. Second out of the inning in this 10-4 ball game. Here's Langford. He'll come in to pinch hit in the seventh spot in the order. Langford hitting in the pitcher spot. Had a pinch hit base hit yesterday close to hitting one out yesterday. 
So King gives up a walk in his one inning of work and a base hit. Unless the Reds come up with some big time magic in the bottom of nine, the Cardinals will leave town having taken three of four and winning eight of ten against the Reds thus far this year. And the bottom line in the division will then be nine and a half games separating the two teams. Not a pleasant picture for Reds fans. And you begin to look more towards a possible wild card berth as opposed to a division. Exactly. And I think every other team in the division begins to shift their focus as well. They looked at this series as a big one with the Cardinals. Of course, the Houston Astros now below 500 in their record. They've got to be wondering what the heck is going on down there with that ball club that was built to win this year. The Cubs trying to take care of business against the Milwaukee Brewers, but. Everybody looked here and said if, there's, if the Reds can do something against the Cardinals in four games, maybe they can get the momentum back. But now it looks more and more likely that the wild card is about the only way to, to get into the postseason in this division. A division that most of the professional prognosticators at the beginning of the year said would be the, the tightest of all. So what do we know? By the way, Brewers have tied the Cubs 1 1 in the seventh at Wrigley. Two balls, two strikes to Langford. Shoots this one right up to shoot. There's Jimenez. He's got it. That'll do it. But Edmonds, he's done it with his bat. He's done it with his glove. He did it again with his bat this time. A double, and it's 10 4 St. Louis. Last round up time for the Reds. Willie Moe leads it off. Coming up after the ball game, Gold Star Chili Red Trap will come your way. JD, Jim Day standing by to give you the final touches of this one. Gold Star Chili Red Trap after the game and after every Reds game on FSN Ohio. Edgar the man today our Lexus long ball shot Edgar Renteria's came in the third inning that tied the game at two and that started a five run inning Chris. You know I'm not a big believer that hitters actually will pitchers to make mistakes and throwing balls right down the middle but he got a couple of pitches the first two times up against Jose Acevedo that seemed that way they were right down Broadway and he didn't foul him back he put the wood to him and Edgar Renteria continues his toward hitting against the Reds and he's for a guy that kind of struggled so far earlier in the season he has really gotten it together big time and he probably can thank this Reds pitching staff for a lot of that. Another productive day for Renteria in the field and at the plate this whole series he's been a factor Edgar today two hits and a walk and five plate appearances including that homer. Here's Willie Moe. Pena will face Cal Eldred the new pitcher for St. Louis. Supan started he's on pace to win his ninth against five losses. Willie Moe first pitch swing and skies it to the infield. Full holds calling. And Albert's got it one away. So Willie Moe struck out robbed of a hit bounced into a double play on a great play by Roland in the fourth singled to knock in the Reds fourth run in the seventh and then this pop up to the first baseman for the first out of the ninth inning. And here's Jason Romano up for the second time he struck out pinch hitting for Vanderwall in the seventh inning. LaRue on deck for Cincinnati. Tomorrow be on the air with Real Reds at 7:30. Game will follow, and as the Brewers come to town, Aaron Harang will go rather 6:30, and the game will start at 7. The Brewers come to town. Aaron Harang will go for Cincinnati, and not official yet, but we believe Hendrickson, the youngster, will start for Milwaukee tomorrow, making his trek from the minor leagues up to the majors for Ned Yost Ball Club, and then on Tuesday, Brandon Clawson. The young man who was in the Aaron Boone deal from the Yankees last year will make his 2004 debut with the Reds. 
against Doug Davis game two of that two game series with Milwaukee the Reds will then head to Chicago to play the Cubs day games Wednesday Thursday will be back on the air next weekend against Pittsburgh from Pittsburgh two balls two strikes to Jason Mano out of Tampa loops this one to right will Reggie get there he will do it. And here comes LaRue, who represents the final hope for Cincinnati. 31,699 here at Great American Ballpark today. Four good crowds as the Cardinals have come to town, but the scoreboard, by the time it's all said and done, will show St. Louis taking three of four in the series. And eight of ten so far this season. Two more to the Brewers. Milwaukee now leading the Cubs three to one. Top of seven at Wrigley. So if it stays the way it is, not only will the Cardinals win here to push the Reds nine and a half back, they'll stretch their lead over the Cubs to eight. And the Cardinals head to Chicago tomorrow. There's the 0 2 to LaRue. That'll do it. Cal Eldred does a nifty job in the ninth, and the Reds will lose three of four to the first place St. Louis Cardinals. Tony LaRusa comes home with the W. Final in this one, 10 runs, 13 hits, no errors, 4 9 and 0 for Cincinnati. Yep, Chris, they're playing well. Yeah, they're playing some great baseball. They've got a solid team, experienced personnel, and Tony LaRusa's got them focused as they've been all year long. Our focus is on Gold Star Chili Red Trap. J.D. standing by with that after these messages. See you at the ballpark, everybody.